Hey folks, today's episode is brought to you by CarParts.com. CarParts.com is the smarter way to shop for auto parts. Their fast, mobile-friendly experience makes it easy to shop for the parts you need when you need them. Just enter the year, make, and model of your vehicle. Start shopping and start saving. It's that simple. Uh, It's very easy. I needed a bunch of stuff for my M3, from interior parts to power steering lines to taillights, and I was able to find all the parts I needed really quickly. Their vehicle finder was really good. I had a bunch of different options from uh, suppliers and cost and style, and I ordered them. Everything went in really nice, and it definitely changed the way my car looks inside and outside. Awesome. Carparts.com stocks their own inventory, cutting out the middleman and passing the savings on to you. So whether you've been in a collision, or just working on your project car, or need to catch up on maintenance, visit carparts.com slash the smoking tire for 10% off $100 or more on select car brands. Get the right parts right now at carparts.com slash the smoking tire. We are also brought to you today by Athletic Green. Greens. Athletic Greens I have been using like every single day for the last week since it showed up. Um, as we talked about uh, on a show uh, in th- in this week, actually, I went to uh, get an annual physical. And uh, one of the things my doctor mentioned was that I should take get back on a multivitamin. At the beginning of COVID, I started taking multivitamins because I read that it was good to have, you know, bulk up on vitamins to maybe help not get COVID. And then once vaccinations came out, I kind of waned off that. And my den- my doctor said I was, uh, I was a little low on some vitamins. So I started taking AG1 from Athletic Greens. It tastes good. It doesn't taste like sand. It's got kind of a mild tropical taste that I'm actually looking forward to each morning, kind of like a nice juice. Uh, So with one delicious scoop of this AG1 stuff, you're getting 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, focus, and aging. Uh, I, I, you know, I need this stuff. I'm getting older. It's harder to maintain a healthy weight and healthy energy with the work schedule that we've got. And like I said, my doctor said I needed to get more vitamins. My vitamin levels were a little bit low. It's easy to pack. You can bring it with you when you travel. It's lifestyle friendly. Uh, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, it falls into there. There's none of any of those things in there. There's no sugar, less than a gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, nothing artificial, and it still tastes good. Uh, you can get a year subscription, and it comes with a year's supply of vitamin D, which is so important to add in the winter months. We don't get as much sunlight. Humans like are supposed to be outside like all day, every day, so almost nobody like seriously, almost nobody, unless you're like a farm worker or something, you don't get enough vitamin D. If you work in an office, you almost certainly don't get enough vitamin D. And it costs less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than a cold brew habit. Uh, They've got over 7,000 five-star reviews on Google. Professional athletes recommend it and more and more and more. So right now it's time to claim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. Not, you don't need to take a million different pills. You don't need any more supplements. Just look out, with your, look out for your health with this AG1. And to make it even easier for you, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash tire. That's athleticgreens.com slash tire to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. athleticgreens.com slash tire. Tire. Also brought to you today by Squarespace. Doesn't matter what you're doing in your life, chances are that thing is going to need a website. Whether it's a personal blog, whether it's for resume building, whether you're doing uh, a business, whether it's an online business, an in person business, you want to uh, 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 gather all your social media into one place, Squarespace is where you can do 
all of that stuff. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand, growing your business, or organizing your personal life online. Stand out with a beautiful website to engage with your audience, to sell anything, products, content, even your time, right? I don't know anything about HTML or coding or web design or nothing, and I was able to make not only the Smoke and Tire website, but the Westside Collector Car Storage website easily and efficiently just by moving boxes around and typing in words. They've got a bunch of ready-made layouts that look good, classic, that you can change certain things, but are really easy to navigate, or you can start your own from scratch. Super, super easy either way. Uh, if you want to uh, have multimedia in there, if you want to have an online store in there, if you want to aggregate social media, you want to have photo albums, you want to have surveys and forms, all this stuff is easy drop and drag with Squarespace. I mean, I, I love how easy Squarespace is. The billing, the fact that you can buy a domain name and then start a website there and then manage that website, get analytics on that website. It's all in one place at Squarespace. So check out squarespace.com slash tire for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your new site, use offer code tire. So squarespace.com slash tire and then offer code tire to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Squarespace.com slash tire, offer code tire. Double up on that tire. Double tire. And of course, lastly but not leastly, we're brought to you by Blackview Dash Cams. A bunch of people have DM'd me on Instagram or hit me up in, in emails or whatever on Twitter saying that they have bought these Blackview Dash Cams after our uh, recommendation, our endorsement, and they love them, especially if you're a rideshare driver, a taxi driver, or you want that extra layer of protection for your car, you need to consider the Blackview DR750X three-channel plus dash cam with not one, not two, but three cameras watching the front, rear, and interior of your vehicle at all times. Uh, this camera simultaneously records the front, rear, and interior of your vehicle. Uh, the front and rear sensors is a Stony, Sar Sony, Stony, Sony Starvis sensor, and the interior camera can record even in full darkness thanks to its infrared LEDs. Uh, it all, the triple camera model also includes a GPS logger, a built-in Wi-Fi, cloud connectivity, and built-in voltage monitoring for parking mode so it doesn't drain your battery. The dash cam comes with a free Blackview app allowing you to connect to your dash cam directly or over the cloud, get impact notifications, download videos to your phone, watch the live view, and more. Moreover, Blackview's seamless pairing feature makes connecting to your dash cam incredibly easy. The DR750X 3 channel comes with native parking mode, meaning you can hardwire your Blackview and it will automatically activate parking mode to watch over your parked vehicle, all while monitoring the battery's voltage and shutting down if necessary. Thanks to the video buffer, the few seconds leading to triggering events are also recorded, so you never miss the important details. I love this camera because it gives me uh, the reassurance that my vehicle is fully protected even when parked. So go down to blackview.com, B-L-A-C-K-V-U-E.com slash T-S-T and use promo code TIRE to get 10% off any Blackview dash cam. That's Blackview, B-L-A-C-K-V-U-E dot com slash T-S-T and use promo code TIRE to get 10% off any Blackview dash cam. Uh, free shipping for orders over $200. All right, on this episode of the podcast, my pal Matt Crook is in studio. He is one of the uh, founders and former CEO of 1552 Wheels that I'm sure you've heard of. Uh, he has relinquished his role in that company and ventured off to do some of his own independent design work. But uh, we only talk about that a little bit on this show. We mainly talk about Volkswagens. <laughs> 
old and new Volkswagens. Uh, we talk about Porsche. We talk about the wheel design business, uh, what that's like uh, for better or worse, um, and answer a lot of questions that people have about uh, what it's like to be in the wheel business. Um, I love this guy. He's a, he's a great friend, great person. We really disagree about the Volkswagen New Beetle, but that's okay because Matt Crook from 1552 Wheels is on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Welcome. Well, Land the- Rover on Steelies. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's, it's a good the, choice. It's the wife's, uh, the wife's ride. It's a good choice. It's a fantastic choice. I, I was telling Zach, it's the most reliable car I've ever owned. Well, that's good. Yeah, I don't know if that says anything about my other cars. It uh, does both. It, do, it does. Okay, great. great. But um, tell them how many miles you've done in that car. Oh, we've done forty thousand miles. Um, it's got about one hundred and thirty, one hundred thirty-five, I think, actually, so maybe oh, a little okay. more. But the thing just, you know, cranks. It's awesome. I don't. Uh, I mean, I know why Land Rover and Jaguar have a reputation, but like our experience uh, with Jaguar has not been, my mom's got a Jag and and it's been just fine. Yeah. I feel like everything's going to break. It doesn't matter what you buy at this point, it's going to break. Everything seems more complicated. Well, yeah. I guess that's my thing too. Even this, I mean, it's complicated, but- not as not, it's not any more complicated than a lot of the other cars that no, I own. I it's mean, not more complicated than my electric Ford. Well, there you go. Yeah, that just had to go to the shop for a week. Yeah, because when something breaks, I have no idea what the heck I'm doing on those things. Yeah. I just sit, I just stand there, you know, and you just stare fi- at it. Do you try to fix it? No, I just oh. stare at it. Yeah, okay. And then just and then they, is there a dealer in Ohio? No, <laughs> no. The Land Rover, I take all the way down to Costa Mesa to uh, a Costa friend's Mesa shop. from Ojai? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a you know good friend, you know. Jesus Christ! He just opened a new shop down in uh, Costa Mesa, and it's a fun little shop. Does a bunch of different things, and I don't know. It's fun. It's good. All right. Yeah. Well, do what you got to do. You got to fucking tow that bitch 150 miles. So be it. AAA. 160 AAA. miles. Is it, is it 100 limit. miles? It's not 100. It's more than 100 miles. It's, it's like just over 100 oh, miles. Yeah. yeah. So Haggerty if does I need 150. To. Yeah, really? AAA mm-hmm. does one sixty if you have the top level. Which yeah, I do. premium. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they do. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, you get one one fifty toe yeah. or whatever, and then the rest are a hundred. Oh, I see. One like now I'm really fucked. Toe. Yes, <laughs> they, they need the Ojai, you know, kind of. Uh, no, haggerty has got you know? unlimited one fifties. Really? Yeah. How is that possible? I don't know. What's they th- charge a lot for insurance. Yeah. There you go. That's, well, money. that's true. I it's know. Called money. I know. Yeah. I I, 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 I don't take too much advantage, but if like. If I'm like, uh, if a car needs to get out to Donnie's in the desert and I don't have time to drive it, I'm like, the brakes don't work. Come well, get me. it. And you know, you know, you know me new cars? Well, not new, but I'd say uh, junkers I buy that aren't running. And then obviously it's, well, the car broke down. Yeah. Yeah, at four flats. I don't know what the hell happened, yeah, but we need man. to get this thing back, back I was driving to my behind house. James Bond and he threw <laughs> the spikes out of the car. What a dick. Dude. <laughs> now I got four flats. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, sometimes. Sometimes it's needed. I haven't necessarily actually had a big breakdown in a long time, but, you know. Good for you. Yeah. I just did a rally, uh, the Overcrest rally, all the way through, like, Utah and Arizona in my, in my What's 1990. What's the Overcrest rally? It's just like uh, all these guys drive out. Uh, from Chris Cleowell and Jake, they drive out from, like, Minis- Minneapolis area. Uh, and they drive, drive all the way out to, um, I guess, Utah. And then draw all the way through Utah and Arizona and, and – and, um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Is it like a luxury rally or kind of a basic? Uh, basic? You just get your own hotels in the oh. areas. They let you know where, and then they have the rally that you get to go kind of just cruise and do the scenic route, and there's some really fun areas and things like that. But it's just a long rally, three days, that you mm. just get to go rip around and find really fun roads and see some cool things, get yourself nice. into sticky situations. But my well, mark- I assume it's all tarmac. It is all t- well. Yeah. No, there's actually a big dirt section where, oh, really? like, where you're going up this huge canyon with just giant cliffs and nothing. And it's just all dirt, so you're just sliding oh. around, and everybody's kind of, you know. Is that why your car looks so cars. dirty there? Jeez, yeah, my car's filthy, but that, yeah. it's kind of supposed to be filthy. It looks cool you know? though. Thanks. Yeah, it's it's that that's a fun one. It's a good dirt. Is that the car you drove? No, I drove my 1990 Mark II. Oh, eight valve, the white one, which is um, I don't know, probably there. That's it is, a Volkswagen right there, number number 53, like Herbie. Yeah. yeah. Volkswagen, you know? So it's a GTI Mark II, yeah, not yeah. a Jetta Mark II. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. GTI. I've got two Mark II GTIs. So. I like the wheels. Thanks. And, yeah. is it, and white walls. <laughs> no, they look like it. That's not a white wall? No, it's kind of like an E34. Um, oh, like a turbo fan. Yes, sort of. It's kind of like a, a you know. 
Mine is, I'm just bottom. colorblind that looks white it, from this angle, right? No, no, it does. It looks a bit because there's a little black gap between yep. that outer one. It's and similar, the, like when you look at the when you look at the M5s and they got the turbine wheels on there. It kind of looks like they got white walls. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So some yeah. of them do have white walls. Yeah. So it's you're, fun. Yeah, you are. You're a vintage Volkswagen guy. I've always been through and through Volkswagen, uh, and then obviously graduating from. Audi to Porsche, right? I mean, right. that's kind of the, the piece that I've well, got. Well, those, those you know. 80s GTIs are real cool. They're fun. They're tons of fun. I mean, this is a 90, and then I have a 92 16 valve in Montana Green, which is Ooh. a ton of fun. Yeah. So that's kind of, um, yeah, I don't know. Always when I first school. got my license, I wanted the, the 98 VR6. Oh, yeah, for but sure. But it was like, it was it was a weight. Like, it was like the two cars I wanted when I in, in that period that I wanted and couldn't get yep. was the, the VR6, which was like a six month wait. Which, oh, I was, yeah. which was like shocking to me. I think it might, it must have, the Mark IV must have just come out, or Mark III. Mark III mm-hmm. must have just come out. Mark III came out in 93 with the Jetta by itself. 94 was the first um, golf sport. Right. Uh, but 90, the GTI VR6 must have been 97 or 98. Was 95. The first. Oh, well, 95 then, was the first I guess they just here. weren't selling many in Greenwich. <laughs> and then I wanted a Prelude Type SH. Oh, yeah. Which the Honda dealer literally was like, pfft. No. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? They're like, do you know how long it takes to get one of those? I'm like, I don't get it. It's a fuck. It's a prelude. Like, yeah. but that was a thing. Wow. That's how I ended up with that Subaru Legacy GT. Love it. On the wall, which was an okay car. A great car. Like, no, it was a nice car. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it yeah. wasn't as, it probably was not as fun as either a prelude or a GTI would have been. No, probably not. Mm. But. Definitely, I wouldn't say it was. Des- you didn't end up with some like cutlass, you know what I mean? No, no, no. It was just great. No, no. I was, I was very, very. You my, know, my first spoiled. car was, it was a fine. Mazda Protege uh, DX. Oh wow! But it, DX means suck in Mazda, right? No, it means like means five good? speed manual, dual overhead cam. Oh, like you know, eighty nine Mazda Protege. Like the boxy one earlier. It was like the boxy almost one, almost like the three two three over yeah, in Europe, yeah, you yeah. know, like one of these guys, a yeah. dual overhead cam, kind of. Uh, Actually, really fun car. Basically um, interchangeable with the Corolla of that period. Yeah. Yeah. But way cooler. <laughs> way cooler. Way cooler. Oh, look, it had the same steering wheel as the uh, RX-7, didn't it? I ended up uh, crashing this car, right, because we all do f- stupid things when we're young. So what, what I did was is we, we thought it was really fun to kind of just follow people to see how, for how long they would kind of figure it out, right? <laughs> and there was this kid in high school um, who owned a VW Beetle, new Beetle, and it was just kind of funny, but... It's a cool car. Now yeah. I have a Beetle, right? So it's full circle. But uh, we decided following him. He kind of started to get a little tripped out, you know? So it was a little slick out. And uh, we chased him for about 15 minutes and came over this crest. And all of a sudden, lift throttle over steer, kind of, uh oh, rear end slides Ooh. out. I hit a tree, spin out, hit another pole, uh, and then get out of the car. It's totaled. And then he drives by. I think that's like, <laughs> definitely yeah. like, that's the most humbling moment yeah. after. Because then he has a way better story than me. Yeah. You know what I mean? His story is way better than my yeah. story. <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs> yeah. You should, yeah. And that's what you always dream of. This guy's following me, pissing me off, and then he crashes. Happen, that, it happened to me once, chase. actually. Yeah. Yeah. That, the, in the inverse. Yeah. A guy, when I was in working at the Gotham Dream Cars back in the day, I was wow. driving a then new Gallardo on wow. the freeway, transporting it to a rental or something, and someone in a G Wagon had a, a flip phone back at this was flip phone era. Yeah. Right, it was pre iPhone. And they were trying to video me while driving oh, and crashed into the guardrail. Wow. And fucking bounced off that bitch and tried to then play it off. Like he didn't just crash into the guardrail. I'm like, hey, cool, yeah, cool car, man. I'm like, I just, I just watched you do thirty grand in damage to that fucking thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even. I didn't. I mean, you an old I, beetle I was the, now? I was the an guy. Old new beetle. Oh yeah, dude. It's uh. It, why? So, what do you mean why? Why? It's like you know, because that's this is the car that I love, right? So oh, check I it get out, it. right? It's twenty five years old, isn't it? This. It's entering ironic cool. Oh no, because I've always thought it was cool. See, really? Yo, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? You. That is oh, not dude, a cool car. That's so cool. So if it was a Dune, that'd take, be like, oh maybe. T- but take it's a not. look. Type in, uh, type in Beetle Cup uh, oh, race yeah. series, right? Yeah, so I, so I know in, about in 2000, that. yeah, for sure, yeah, it was cool. amazing, right? So it's basically an RSI. They they basically ran these all wheel drive, you know, 24 valve V6, does yours, fantastic vehicle. Does yours have all wheel drive? Um, no. Okay. So what it was is yeah. my wife's. And also, uh, here's the thing: these are ugly race cars. So they're these amazing. are not good race. They're cars. so good race cars. <laughs> so my wife cars. bought this car. Family bought this car brand new, right? They named it Mr. Buggy. It's a five cylinder, 
20 valve manual, so it's basically half a Gallardo, no turbo, no direct injection. Uh, yeah, basically half a Gallardo. It's basically half a Gallardo. Uh-huh. So, right, <laughs> all you need to do is toss a turbo on that guy, right? And then you blow it up. And then, it you, run, and then, and then you run an R32 drivetrain, make it all-wheel drive. So now you have, and, and then you call your friends I see. At, so what you do is you, cha- you take it and change everything. No, and no, then no, it no, becomes no. okay. I mean, that's okay. But it's basically- You did that with a Mustang. It's very similar to this, right? Yeah, you did. A five liter. I didn't like un-Mustang my Mustang. No, well, you I'm not unbeetling the Beetle. Look at this. I mean, see, so so my friends at VW Motorsport- well, my Mustang didn't start as an ugly car. <laughs> that's, well, that's a subjective, it started this as a design, subjective this is design, okay, argument. Come on. Yes. Really? Come on, Peter Schreier, Jay Mays. I mean, these guys, the designers of this, I, as well I as the Mark them, One TT. That's an ugly car. Beautiful car. This was this was remarkable. I That's think like the, if the you Beetle took a TT beautiful. and made yeah. everything about it worse. Well, you crashed it. No, but you wouldn't do that to Shortened a TT. It. You wouldn't take everything about it and make and make it no, worse. No, because a TT is great. This is great as well. But the TT, you don't need. You know. Well, okay. If we're going race car, then sure, I would put a DTM kit on it, like the opt. You know, old DTM cars. But I nerd out on these things, right? So, I'm like for sure me, the whatever. Stoke. Is, like I sold my nine nine six GT three. Right, sold it, and I'm having fun with the Beetle, and it sounds ridiculous, but like the dollar for Stoke value in regards to just pure Stoke, this didn't cost me anything. My buddies from Volkswagen Motorsport sent me some of the last Beetle Cup kits, right? And I got some magnesium, these aren't it, but I got some magnesium OZ wheels from the race cars to put on. Um, I mean, that's the kind of like- I just think the high point is very low. No, the high point, yes, but remember this, it's also backwards. The low point is very high, meaning you're like 10 grand into this thing and you're having so much fun. I just like, it doesn't drive better than a Golf. And it drives the same as a Golf. Why? Well, okay, but if you take the same, if, this, if the math is same as Golf, subtract ugly, you're at a worse place than a golf. But but like when I'm chasing you and we're getting at it, you're so much more pissed off when the Beatles behind <laughs> you and you can't shake me. Yeah. Right? I mean that's yeah, you know, there's, like a, so, I, there's a playfulness to it. Of which, course. Yeah. I, I, I guess. Get that. I don't I don't get it, but the I guess. Juxtaposition sure. is there. Matt, you just ordered a pink spider. I mean, this is the whole like, yeah. this is what we're playing here. You're well, in the same color. exact I would, game. If you said you painted a frozen berry, you know? I'd be like, "Okay." Hey, well No, it's tan. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, okay, tan Beige. is not well, Tan is not good. Whoa, guys, even... this is crazy. We both really. I reviewed no, no. one of these when they were out, and it was I hated everything about it. Oh, man. I, I totally respect what you're doing, and I'm, I'm not going to knock someone for having fun because everyone has a different kind of idea oh, of fun. Oh, yeah. But I will say that I hate uh, Jewish race and gold, <laughs> which Matt loves, and I hate tan. That's not Jewish race and gold. I know it's gold, not, but I also so. hate tan. I feel like they're similar, so I'm just saying I don't okay. like that color. That's all, right. all I'm saying. All right. Hey, uh, that's okay. We're all We're not here to yuck your young. Uh, Do what you want, man. Like... If it does like all building a burnouts, sleeper, like cool. I get the idea of building a sleeper. If that's what you're trying to do, build a sleeper. No, and I get that. But isn't it just fun building like a cup car from like, a, I mean, like I said, last time we were on here, I talked about Dodge Stratuses, how unbelievably cool they were. Well, but then we looked at pictures of them and we determined that they look cool. They are cool. Oh, they, but the, but the, but the stock Dodge Stratus isn't cool, but the no, race but car is cool. it looks kind of cool. And this thing, this thing's awesome. The race car is cool, right? Look at that. I Come mean, on. Uh, no. Not really. I'm, I'll bring it by. I mean, you guys, a score you guys will be a excited, subjective you know? argument. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'll, I would love to drive it. So yeah. you put R32 in it with a turbo. That thing will haul ass. Yeah, like I know train, HPA, turbo, you know? HPA put a TTRS drivetrain in one of these things. Um, well, they did the, the twin turbo, uh, the twin turbo VR6? twin turbo twenty four valve VR6 uh, from HGP, which was in Europe, and they took that kit for the for the North American market. But yeah, no, it's a fantastic car, you know. Like, if you had one of those that was 600 horsepower, like, I'd make a video about it and hope that people would watch it because of that, because that math works. But isn't it fun, though, that, like, I don't ha- like, my, I guess maybe that's what makes me ridiculous is that I didn't necessarily dream of, in- well, I liked Integra Type R's, but at this point, a clean Integra Type R is 70 grand. Yeah, yeah, that's but not like, a 70 But it's fun, right, experience. that I dreamed of stupid things that will cost me 10 grand all in that I can mm-hmm. just have a crap ton of fun in. I think that's sure. awesome. Yeah. If you're so, having so, fun, that's so what's for me, important. But, yeah. like, I'm looking at all these photos of these Beatles on the track. I'm just going. Look how much fun this guy's having at the bottom right. He's waving at everybody. I mean, this I is mean, look. If you want to race a, you want to race a beetle with the fucking door open and half hanging out of the car. Like, all right, that's well, me. He, he, that person won something. I see. I think they probably won. We're just in a good mood. Everybody in a beetle wins. Something. There you go. That was it. I, yeah. I, when I was shopping for cars, there was a guy who was selling like, was it like a five ten wagon or something. He had caged it. Put like an SR20 in it, and it was like a drift car. But the e-brake handle was an old person's like wooden cane with mm. a loop. Like it was an ugly car, and it was also yeah. gold. But I wanted to buy it because I was like, this is so silly and so fun at the same time. It was think, not good looking. But. As I get older, though, I realize I don't actually care about any other equation except for fun, right? Because I'm getting to the point where 
I don't care. You could be in your new spider, and the lady next to you is going to just dust the piss out of you in their Tesla. Oh, I don't so care about that. There's no more. But even in the context of like, it's just I don't actually care anymore. If it's fun, I'm in. If I want to make a, a Fiat X19 look like a Stratos and just go buzz mm. around acting like it's fun, and I don't know, I guess. Well, that's fine. You can yeah. do that. I mean, I don't know. Just fun, right? I just and, don't like those Beatles. Okay. I mean, that's that's all there is to it. I'm not it's just, saying it's that just hard for me you to, shouldn't it's, it's, do any other project ever. I know. I just don't like like because. In in my experience, you have like it's so awesome. you have good taste in other stuff. Yeah, you know? That's why I think it's weird that you have such bad taste in this. Well, what's funny is the division. <laughs> the, the division is like Matt. Matt can't understand why you like them, and you can't understand why Matt doesn't like them. It's like an, it's a wonderful thank impasse. you. Yeah. No, that's actually hundred percent true. Impasse. Because yeah. I genuinely look at that and I'm like. Like, it's like, not because oh, I don't like weird rad. cars or engine swaps or, oh, for sure. or sleepers. I like all of those well, things. Look at the Pajero. Yeah, Pajeros are great. It's the weirdest thing ever. Yes, but it Pajeros totally makes are excellent. Sense. Yeah. But I guess for me also, and I guess this comes down to it, it's not that I just love a, a Beetle. I think it's because maybe and really, as a race car, I think it's because they only raced well, other Beetles. Yes. It's not like the Beetle did really well against <laughs> Mustangs and no. Camaros and Trans Am, no. and I just don't get it. Well, like Volkswagen had a race series for their car, yeah, just and like, that's why it was on the race track. Like the Porsche Cup, you know? It's just awesome. <laughs> it's um, just like Porsche Cup. Same Super thing. Super Trofeo, yeah. <laughs> but... but but there's something really fun about that because I guess I don't want a Beetle. I want the Beetle Cup car, well, right? So that, that's the only thing. It's a juxtaposition, thing. right? Because right. normally the Beetle is known for what? Like hippies, economical transport. Flower in the vase. Flower in the vase. Boomers, well, you know, basically. Boomers, yeah. Germans, Boomer, whatever. Boomers. And now it's like, well, let's make it a race car. So, of course, there's like a playfulness to that. Yeah. I think it's just ridiculous, but it's a lot of fun. Look at, all right. Look well, at if them you're all. having fun, have yeah, fun. Yeah. We're gonna, okay. we're, I'm going to take you for We'll do a one take. And that's I, fun. My See, beetle that's when fun it, cup. <laughs> one yeah. cup is the, vi- is no, the that's vintage great. Beatles. Yeah, that's great. These Super Beatle sh- stuff. Are these center seat? Uh, they're not. I think. Oh, okay. They are not. They're, I think they they're, are. Tube chassis? I think they actually. The one, the one that when Chris Harris was talking about, they have a passenger seat. When Chris Harris was here, right. oh, that some of them seem to have a center seat. That really white weird. one looks like it does, doesn't it? Or you yeah. lean in it like a motorcycle. <laughs> you might. Yeah. I also there's also a thing called Beetle Ball, which is that yeah. which is the Beetle Street Racing. Mm-hmm. That's um, hilarious. No, there's some cool stuff. I guess it looks like some of these are center seat and some of them are left hand drive. Yeah. Interesting. You're right. How interesting. I mean, I guess if you were gonna build a Beetle race car, you might as well go fucking center seat, huh? I mean, why not? One of my buddies bought one of those center seat 911 conversions. Is that, from... that company did it like a nine, a couple 997s. They did like two oh coupes gosh, and a cab. Yeah, yeah. Center seat conversions. Yeah. One of my homies actually bought one of the coupes. Who was that? FF or 9FF or yeah, somebody else? I don't or remember. Who did that? Uh, I don't know, but my friend Tiago uh, bought bought one of the coupes, and he's having a fucking pretty good time with it. Centro. Yeah, the Centro 911. Yeah. Who made this fucking thing? Uh, Trinity Motors. It's actually not. It's not terrible. <laughs> no, like because he because he could have gone really fucking wrong. So they move the whole center console offset to the right. Okay. They build this kind oh, of yeah. this kind of dash that it, it. I mean, it's obviously like it looks like a modified car, but it doesn't look like it's put together terribly. It doesn't look like, and I mean, no disrespect to Busy Moto, but his was like a strip chassis. Well, this was a race car. This was a race car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. The, the steering wheel just slid over on like the dash rails. Mm-hmm. But this, yeah, this looks like I just wish they could have taken that carbon and just wrapped it. I mean, in leather. Just give me something that's more factory. I don't care yeah. if it's carbon. You can tell me after, I'll get even more wowed. Right. Like, there's carbon under there? Yeah, yeah. That's cool, but I don't want to see it. They did know? a convertible, too. They have a cup holder. Yeah, they do. Just in case you're just ripping ass. And you I think this it, is you know? the one. This this one right here in this in this this is the one that my homie bought. And the, the one who, the, the my friend who bought it is the dude who uh, is um, lives on the boat in Miami and then rents out the boat to all the Instagram hoes. I guess my question is why? I mean, just oh, for God. just for the for the weirdness, you know, for the lulls, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't. It's a three seater. He's got a back seat. <laughs> I wouldn't personally spend my money on yeah. it, but I think it. I think he got it for a pretty reasonable price. Yeah, no, it's I'm not sure. like it's not like he blew 150 G's in this thing. Oh, it's kind of cool. You know, it's a Carrera S. He, he got it at a pretty reasonable price, and I think. Uh, I think he's having a good time with it. That's all that matters. You know? It is really kind of 
weird it's funky. and fun to look at. Yeah, it's I'll funky. Give that. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like a beetle. <laughs> and it's, the convertible uh, looks really weird. Yeah, the that, convertible's really that, that one doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. Because it's like you're just driving a rocket with no top on. You know, it's a little weird. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but it can be done. I mean, I, there, there is an appeal to the center seat. I mean, there, there, there well, definitely is. Well, the Claren F1, there's yeah. some, it's fun. I mean, I think I, outside of driving a go-kart, I've never actually sat in the middle of a car. It's pretty cool. But it does feel really weird when you're riding on the right side of a car. So there's definitely my brain. To drive on the right, you mean? Yeah, yeah, drive yeah. on the right. So, I mean, driving your Delica, for instance, right? I got, like I've gotten it. so used to it by now. Yeah. It's weird. I can I can, I can, can instantly know where the car is. I can switch times, back yeah. and forth uh, in, in real time, and I'm pretty yeah. proud that I've figured that out. That's it makes like me the, happy. That's like the drift guys that can just hop in a left or right-hand drive car mm. and just like slide inches. I mean, that's impressive. Dude, when I went to New Zealand, I drove a, I drove a bunch of uh, right-hand drive, or not a bunch. I drove two right-hand drive track cars and then a right-hand drive drift car. Wow. And it was actually, I was impressed at myself for it, for being able to do it without it being a problem. Like, handbrake, hand, yeah. hand shift gear, you know, gear. I wouldn't be able to, like, enter Formula D or anything, <laughs> but, like, I could fucking drift this. It was an 86, yeah. right-hand drive 86 with a hand, with a proper handbrake, and I was able to do it. It was not I not an like, issue. I feel like when you're braking with your left foot and you're not really expecting it, and all of a sudden the car just lunges forward, you know, because you, oh, you didn't understand, like, how much to pressure to apply. Wait, braking with your left I'm foot? I'm saying braking. Oh, yeah, well. You know, when you're when you're. Like with left your foot left, braking, right, yeah. Left foot braking, basically. Yeah. If you're not, if you don't, if you're not used to it, right. You'll just. But I feel like the e-brake, I do the same thing. Not oh really, yeah, you yeah. definitely totally. need to like learn yeah. where the handbrake, sure. you know, thing is, and That's like, pretty cool. and when people do a really good job with yeah. a hydro handbrake and it has actually like some semblance of brake feel, right. Like it's nice, like when you can actually like wow. modulate it. Yeah, no, like I wasn't like that's the convertible. <laughs> so Dude, so, so Centro lonely. Centro figured out the world car. Just put the seat in the middle. Global. Yep. Any continent. <laughs> Very good you're point. in. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're always equidistant from the drive through. But <laughs> oh, this geez. is the loneliest. <laughs> this, this picture, just over the rear three quarter of the yeah, convertible. Yeah, that's pretty lonely. It looks like it, it's just by yourself. It looks like my kids' tub. power wheels. You know, what I mean? it's just, yeah. it's a really big power wheel. But it's yeah. got the back seat. It does. But it from does this angle, the back you can't seat. see. Would it. you really want to ride in the back seat of that one? See, that's the hard part too. When your buddy is sitting in the well, middle of it. Well, you've got you would have more leg room. That's true. You I would guess be able I can to fit, stretch your legs out. I can out. fit in yeah. the back of an. I rode in, a, in, a, in an F. I drove in a, an F one very briefly, mm. like, and I rode in the back of one for a more extended period of time. And the seat was not comfortable, but I did get to fully stretch my legs out, and I was like, "This is cool." Wow. I don't know. Would I fit in? A, I probably wouldn't fit in an F one car. Legs no, not legs. a not an F one car. I mean, oh, McLaren, McLaren F one. Okay, different. I was yeah, like, yeah. "Wow, yeah." No, okay. I tried to do that. Uh, Two seat indie yeah. car thing. No. Guess who was not fitting in that? <laughs> <laughs> your, yeah, I wouldn't. Your boy, I, I your boy was not fitting in that bit. With Andretti, I wouldn't fit in that sucker. Yeah, either, it know? wasn't Andretti driving that day. It was like whoever their fucking take se- second second cut is. Wow. Um, Ferretti did it with Andretti, and he said he was like, you know, Mario, what's Andretti? Eighty. Yeah. You know, I think at no. this time is he was really? seventy. Yeah, I think so. Wow. At this time, he was like 77. He's like, still Andretti. Wow. <laughs> still, oh, yeah. still shitting my pants. How old so great. 82. Wow. Still, still okay. Very Nailed it. Wow. Zach fucking drifted with Bob Bondurant when he was 77 or something. That's pretty cool. No, did I? No, he drove around in the ZR1, and he came in when we were hanging you, out. Yo, you didn't get in the car with him? No, was I it rode Tom? with Tom, uh, Tim Cook, or whatever, the guy that did oh, the NASCAR yeah. I think maybe it was Morningstar was who got in the got in the car with Bob. He's like a fighter pilot. He gets out. Yeah. He's like, that's a good car. And it's yeah. a ZR1. I like to drift my ZR1 every day. That's crazy. Keep my reflexes sharp. That's All right, see? dude. Exercise. He's legit. Very you know? legit. Exercise. All right, yeah, yeah, that's Bob, great. I love Bob it. Bob So amazing. Yeah. Dude. Um, so what's happening other than your fucking uh, Beatles situation? You, you made the smart move. You bailed the fuck out of L.A. at the right time. I did. You went up the road. I did. A little bit. A little bit up the road out in Ojai now. So, um, yeah, enjoying life, man. Just, uh, I actually, not a lot of people know, but I resigned as president uh, at 1552. Um, 
in uh, spring of 2020. So, and we were hanging in AACP's garage, and you t- you told us these plans of what <laughs> of what you're doing, what you're doing now, and how yeah. how you can balance your uh, financial needs with your your mental needs. And I was yeah. like, well, this is very interesting. We should yeah. come. We should talk about that. Yeah. No, for sure. It's it's. Um, so you built a big wheel company. Yeah, it was great. Ken Block's um, fucking mobbing on these things. Yeah. Uh, you gave, gave me some wheels for the Delica, obviously the pinnacle yes. of uh, your career. Of course, there it is. <laughs> you know. And uh, and then you go, you know what? Maybe not. Yeah, no. I mean, I loved it. Um, obviously, um, you know, it's starting a wheel company out of a dream of being a kid is much different than trying to scale a wheel company, mm. um, of which I still enjoyed. But I think when it got to the point where just things were so nuts, I really kind of just. Re, you know, you think, especially when you're having a kiddo, you kind of rethink some things. Um, and you know, it, it. I love making wheels. Uh, I love building things with people and collaborating. But I think for me, it was um, as the company was growing and overseeing the company and such. You know, I kind of wanted to get back to the roots of my creativity and find that 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 base of the building of kind of the excitement, right? Mm. Of, of kind of. It felt good. I, I made the jump. Um, and it took me a little bit, but I found that creative freedom again. Uh, I figured out kind of, wow, like now I can do anything I want, right? Because mm-hmm. I was tied to this for so long that now anything is possible. So it was really fun kind of trying to figure out what that next step is. And I wouldn't say that I necessarily have figured it out, but um, just trying to set up my life a little bit different, understanding where I was at, that you know my career doesn't necessarily dictate my lifestyle, but I create my lifestyle and allow my career to kind of mm. fill in those blanks. Yeah, uh, and I think that itself. I'm just having that conversation you know, with someone about like L.A. versus New York. Yeah, where in New York your career drives your lifestyle 100, totally, yeah. percent whereas you can you can force your lifestyle you know, to run it mm-hmm. in a, in, on the West Coast a little easier? It is. It is a little easier. It's also different. That's why I bounced out of L.A. <laughs> but I think there is there is that sweet spot that you can find, and that's kind of what I'm, I'm feeling out right now. And just kind of building things for myself, I guess, you know, really kind of making sure I'm spending my time with my family, making sure that the quality of life is there. And I think um, – Still making wheels, you know, I still do some wheels, a lot of wheels for, for um, Rod Emery and Daniel Arsham and just special clients and things like that, that one, it's fun and also is, you know, uh, worth, under that, worth my under time. Under the 1552 brand? No, that's no. just under my, my oh. name. Just just having fun again, getting back so to the basics. So someone asks you to make a set of wheels, how does that work logistically? Uh, they let me know what they want, and then we talk. And if it sounds like something that I'm, I'm into, let's have some fun. You know? And then what, you design it and it's made where? Exactly. It's made here in the U.S. Um, Just on someone with a mill? Uh, uh, with, a, with, a, yeah, with a fucking exactly. CNC yep. mill? Lathe and mill, and wow. then um, depending on assembly and such and construction method. Uh, you know, yeah, so it's great. I mean, it's fun to kind of get back to the basics of like dreaming about what you can do and, and kind of uh, being able to give it the true attention that you really want hmm. as opposed to having to sell a certain amount of wheels to get to a certain point. And that's not bad. I still loved what I did, but it's fun kind of getting back to the basics of things. So, you know, yeah, right well, if, you're, if you're passionate about something, the best way to fucking ruin that is to have your employment dependent on it, isn't it? 100%. Yeah. I mean, there's aspects of it that's great, but I think, you know, I was getting to the point where after 12 years, I loved it. It was great, but I just wasn't happy. Yeah. Uh, so it was obviously, it was time to make those shifts and make those changes, um, you know, and, you know, hey, running a business is hard. You know that. It's not yeah. easy. It's stressful. There's a lot of things going on. A lot of people depend on you. And at the end of the day, you know, you, you have to focus, number one, on yourself, um, you know, because once you actually are good and you're doing well, you can take care of the people that are around you. But, you know, it was time. That's a hard, so, that's a hard lesson. I, I talk to my shrink about that a lot. And he go, and I and I talk about how I sometimes spread myself really thin and right. fucking stress. And he go, and they and, it, and and oh, why do you do that? Well, because there's there's people who count on me, whether right. it's, you know, whether it's I have to sell ads so that I can make sure Zach gets paid or sure. whether I have to. Do this other thing to make sure that my and and he and he says to me, well, don't you think that those folks would be better off if you were actually your perfor- cup your perf- cup was full if you were performing at yeah. your best and not fucking freaking out all the time? And yeah. I was like, huh, maybe, <laughs> maybe no, for <laughs> sure. And I think that's that's exactly where I'm at. Is I really learned through the progression of of building a business and doing all these things that as I get older, that learning 
more so what your weaknesses are are more important than um, figuring out what your strengths are. Uh, because as you as you go on, you learn the things that you don't want to do, and yeah, usually yeah. the things you don't want to do, you're not very good at. Yeah. The things you like doing, usually you're good at. Yeah. Not always, but most of the time. So as you I focus on those things. I accountants. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like these guys that say built, not bought, and the whole car looks like crap. And yeah. it's like, I'm proud of you, but maybe you should have had some guy paint it and do your interior. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's things that we all can do and things that we shouldn't do. I like do. to think of myself you know? as like, if there weren't people who bought, not built, <laughs> yeah. then all those shops you like would be fucking out of business. For sure. I'm straight bought, not built, son. <laughs> bought, I should get a bought, not built shirt. Dude. There it is. I like that. That should support, be available. Support small business. Yes. Fucking bought, not built. Dude. I like that. That's what actually, do you want from me? That's actually smart. Can't fucking do everything. But I can that, operate a GoPro. But, I don't need to know how to fucking turn a Of course. A <laughs> I want somebody who's really damn good at it. If I spent the next 10 years learning how to paint a car, I still wouldn't be as good as the guy who dude, already spent 10 years. Dude, you seen these fucking you know? roads I'm driving yeah. on? I can't trust myself to make sure this car isn't going to completely come apart. Of when course. I fucking turn a corner yeah. in the canyons. Send that bitch right off a cliff. Yeah, danger zone. Man. Yeah, no, so, thank you. <laughs> it's it's just interesting. So I think like in learning your 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 weaknesses, I think um, as things progress in life, you need to like take advantage of those things that you're good at. Yeah. And I think for myself, taking a step back and, and kind of uh, looking at everything, I said, cool, what are the things I'm good at? You know, what are the things that I need? And, and you know, I want to keep making wheels. And then I have... You know, certain companies I'm working with on a monthly basis. I have big projects that I'm working on with various clients and things. And then I have a couple new startups that I'm working on uh, in the digital space and um, kind of more Real from NFTs. a brand perspective. No, definitely not no. getting into the NFT game. Um, because, like, to me, it's very important that I have a set of wheels that's not actually on my car. Right. But that I can prove I own <laughs> digitally in the blockchain if someone were to go look. Right. Right. right, that you have your wheels. Right, 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 right. No, the these, these wheels, they, they yeah. don't go on the car because no. I can't prove I own wheels that are on my car. Correct. Right? Someone else can be like, those are my wheels. And I'd be like, but they're on my car. They go, but yeah, but, 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 but. Let me but see. But if they're in the blockchain digitally, I can prove that I own those wheels to some nerds. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Which I wouldn't even actually understand. I don't even know how to know that someone, I guess they open their wallet, their digital wallet, right? Zach just sent what? me the best meme that fucking really ever. There was like <laughs> some guy showing Gollum a screen of the computer with a ring on it. And he goes, so you don't have the precious, but you can prove, you can prove that you, you have the precious in the blockchain. <laughs> so, you have your, you can pay to have your name listed as an owner in an online distributed. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of like buying a store. I want yes. that's your name on it. I'm going to order thing. a print yes, of that, is. Zach, for my wall. Yeah, do like, it. And there's only so many stars. The star registry. The star yeah. registry. Yeah. It's, it's totally such a good scam. Star Brilliant scam. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. yeah. Or like in Ireland or Scotland where you can buy like a plot of land and you become a lord. How that's dare right. you? I do own that plot of that's land. That's <laughs> exactly. No, I'm going to build a house. I did that it's to just... register cars there. <laughs> that's perfect. I like that. Own a piece of land. I also have a P.O. box in Montana and. Yeah. I need to get one of those. And I've pitched a tent in Nebraska. Jeez, man. I love it. Yeah, I mean, we can own land every. Look at this. This is amazing. Scott's mm. Law. Souvenir plots. Yeah. Yeah. Hilarious. Jeez. Uh, many commentators of the sale pra sales practice consider it a scam. No fucking shit. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, speaking of scams. Yes. Uh, my notebook's in the other room. Hang on, I, I have I have I have to talk about a little a scam. Because, right. but I need the notebook to do it. I'm sorry. Hang no, on. you're good. I forgot. You're good. I think. Um, Let's talk about what uh, color beetle we're gonna buy him. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> what color? What do, you, what do you think? I think uh, frozenberry. Frozenberry beetle. Or maybe like a bright yellow. Yeah, we'll go that? to match do the sunflower. Do you sunflower. like yellow cars? Yeah. Depends on the car. All right, so definitely yellow. Definitely yellow. Okay. What would you do yellow if you wanted to get you a beetle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you you joked to me yesterday when I was like when I was like, hey, you, are we uh, are we good? We're good for tomorrow. We're good for the show. And you're like, yes, I've already uh, bought eight hundred dollars worth of gas to get down <laughs> yes. there. Yes, yeah. So <laughs> gas is a real, you know, it's all over the fucking news. Sure. Right. Now, right? I, someone put up this morning that gas prices in L.A. have surpassed the I am legend apocalypse apocalypse yeah. prices, mm. which sucks. Nobody wants to pay a lot of money for gas. And oh, by the way, we're still paying about. 
two thirds of what they pay in England, of course, for gas, Leader. right? Yeah. Like, like they, they, in in modernized countries in Europe, they still pay more than us for gas, right? Oh yeah. But I was getting gas um, two days ago, and someone put a sticker on the pump pointing towards the price that was Joe Biden going, <laughs> I did that. Yes. And I am not a big Joe Biden fan, mainly because of he ran on a progressive platform and then sure. abandoned it for corporate interests once he got into office, right? No cancellation of student loan debt, no fucking Medicare right. for all. All the things that I think would really help our country. But I follow some people on Instagram, one of whom posted something that I wanted to look into a little more before I shared it because I didn't want it to be leftist propaganda. Right. I like it. And I wanted I wanted it to be leftist truth, not leftist propaganda. So uh, blame there's a lot of people blaming Russia and the Russia uh, situation right. for our, our gas prices. Sure. Most people who are doing that blame are either oil lobbyists or oil companies. Well, yeah, of course. We get in America one to three percent of our of our oil from Russia. Okay. Most comes from Canada, actually. Wow. But 1% to 3% is Russia. However, uh, Shell, Chevron, BP, and Exxon have all posted record profits. Uh, Shell posted a record profit and then in the first quarter of 2022 did an $8.5 billion share buyback. Exxon uh, posted an $8.9 billion profit, highest in eight years, did a $10 billion share buyback. Uh, Chevron posted a $5.4 billion profit, highest in eight years, uh, and BP had uh, an eight-year record profit, uh, $12.8 billion. Jeez. Think These, of the jobs created by those buybacks. The, bu you know? the buybacks <laughs> Think are, of the paper that was printed and the people that had to make that paper. This, what I'm saying, this, right? it's this backed by paper. fucking right. fuel price hike, it's a smokescreen Right? Oh, yeah. The Russia thing is a total smokescreen for these guys to stuff their fucking fat ass pockets with money at our expense. Well, I mean, this is the story last month was Starbucks. So Starbucks was claiming inflation was driving costs up, and that's why they had to raise their prices. But then they posted their profits for the yeah. for quarter four of 2021, yeah. and it was record profits. Yeah. And people were like, well, if the costs have gone up, Shouldn't the profits remain the same, the same percentage? Yeah, or maybe right. a little less. Or less. How about but, a little? How about a little? A little less, right. maybe. But you can pass, the, but pass people those keep the buying. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. I'll still buy my latte. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's the thing, though. It's like we can complain about it, but people are still going. Well, with I gas, mean, what are you going to do? You well, know, what are you going to do? We need gas. I get it. Cars have to be yeah, filled. I get it. Totally. But I just. I feel like there's a there's this information floating around and I checked all this by the way. I checked on the websites of these oil companies and they bragged about these record profits right. in the buyback. Because well, it's in the, it's in their earnings calls. It's, it's in there. Yeah, it's yeah. of course. It's yeah. and it was all from February, like end of February. It's all recent. It's not old information. So like I just feel like the anger and again, not a massive Joe Biden fan. I'm pretty much only a Joe Biden fan if you put him next to Donald Trump. Sure. But, <laughs> but lesser of two evils. I get that. But still, like, I just feel like we need to focus our anger at the actual source of this fucking scam and not in a way that is intentionally being misdirected. You know? Mm -hmm. No, of course. I just I mean, how do you actually... Just by yeah, having, just I mean, by having knowledge in your head. That's all. Just by, just, just by having the knowledge. In of your course, head. no, all. I agree. The hard part is when you see. I mean, you read something and everything looks like propaganda, right? So, like, you don't know what to read. So, someone says something over here, and then this guy, one guy, pops in, and then everybody, you know. I mean, at it's this tough, point, dude. Following yeah. a war on Twitter is oh, very difficult. Very difficult. Very difficult because you don't fucking know what's real and what's not real and 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 what have you and yeah. like but that's what's nice about numbers and earnings calls is yeah. you can just go well, that's cost black and profit white. Right? well that's yeah. why in this particular case when i saw this dude this guy Dan Price i follow on Instagram who is the CEO of a startup that's doing that did well and he was the guy who during pandemic 
made sure all of his employees got a base salary of 70000 or over. Like he had a, he, and he's kind of a, a progressive yeah. uh, voice. But I, I wanted to make sure I wasn't, I wasn't distributing, you know, Negative, leftist, yeah, leftist propaganda and not facts. So I checked myself this morning and he was not fucking bullshitting. Yeah. It really is that just one to three percent of our oil from Russia is not a huge percent of our oil. It doesn't affect our actual on the ground gas prices to sure. lose this one percent of oil. Never let a catastrophe go to waste, Matthew. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's true. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Thaddeus also sent me a fun story, if you're interested in this one. What do you think the cars, so top 10 cars driven by people convicted of DUIs? Wow. Ooh. T- brands or models? Hmm. Uh, I have the list. Hang on. SL500 is going to be in there, both new and used. Are we I just going? Like. Are we going make or model here? Uh, going make it's and model? make and model. Make oh, and geez, model. Wow. I mean, three series BMW has got to be in there. I thought it was, but hang on. Wait, I have. I'm throwing I have to SL go back Mercedes. to the link, though. Should we each choose one? Should we each like? You yeah. Know, well, Matt, yeah, write geez, it down. Right? Don't show your work. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. So, all right. So, you, what are you going with? Well, now I just said what I said, but he kind of like. I, I have thought, to pull up. I, I, I have to pull like up the like, story. I'm sorry. Guess. Okay. You're second a guest. Here we go. Right, yeah. Bad influences. Car models owned by people who have the mm. most DUIs. Matt doesn't get to guess because he's looking at the list. I'm yeah. going with SL Mercedes. Really? Okay. Now the mm-hmm. national average, just so you know, is about 1.78 percent of car owners per model. Have a DUI. Wow. Yeah. The average. And some of these cars are going to be pretty obvious, but some are really not. I mean, Altima's probably For instance, there. the number, t- I'll give you the number 10. The okay. number 10 is not a car either of you would remotely guess. The Ford Contour. Mm, no, this, is, I, no. this is done by insurance well, rates. We're not by talking the way. about yeah. California here. Remember no, this. No, no, National. I know. That's National. what I mean. That yeah. changes everything. When I say BMW, actually, mm. no. No, because okay. actually, when I get into it, I think about Middle America. I had my California glasses on. I did too. My, um, one of my first guesses yeah. uh, when Thad said this to me last night, BMW 3 Series. Yeah. I was like, BMW, oh, for sure. BMW yeah. 3. I'm glad we're on the same Ford page. Ford F-150, nope. but that's a numbers game probably. It's just like, wow. the, I mean, it's like the highest selling vehicle I, in the country, right? I'm going to say this, Zach. Of American pickup truck buyers, mm-hmm. Ford F-150 drivers are the least drunk. Because <laughs> no. they're, they're built Ford tough, you That's know what the I mean. They, they are the least yeah. drunk. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I mean, so are we thinking like? I mean, there I is only it. one, one German vehicle on the top ten list. Mm. It is not the BMW 3 Series. It's got to be a Volkswagen Jetta, then. I mean, mm, good no, guess. Uh, marijuana for that one. Good guess. Not <laughs> far. Oh, you're right. Sorry, yes. missed that one. Most out. vape pens yeah. per <laughs> owner would be the Jetta. The Audi A4 oh. is fourth place. Wow! With fourth? an average fourth Whoa. place with an average of three and a quarter uh, percent of Audi A4 owners have had a prior D- DUI conviction. So the average is one point six, and they average is one point seven. They're they're doubled up. Wow! They're doubled up. Man, college yeah. college kids. I'll do, how about this? The cars huh. that are uh, not in production anymore. Uh, the, uh, the two, the Ford Contour, Ten and Nine, the, <laughs> the Dodge Dakota, Dodge Dakota. Wow, that was close. Actually, tied with the Ford Contour, uh, just under three percent. Wow. Now, do you want to know the all top? Of them. I don't know the, all of them. Okay, yeah, let's just let's go start uh, at ten. All right, start at ten, ten is the Ford Contour. Nine right. is the Dodge Dakota. Eight is the GMC Sierra. Wow, I got. I know, I get that. Uh, which Slightly interestingly, more that's true. Leading the, the club, the leading the country club. A little more upscale, yeah. but not that much. Only right. two hundredths of a percent less drunk than the Silverado. Mm. Silverado and GMC. No, buyers, they just didn't get pulled over as much. Roughly, mm. <laughs> nicer neighborhood. Because yeah, yeah that's what I mean. So we're, we're, they're both on the list. GMC Sierra and Silverado, right next to each other. That if is you put amazing. them together, they really are. The they're same. supremely drunk. Wow, supremely drunk. Yeah. So just like the that's trucks, specifically why Chevy breaks. GM breaks these cars up. <laughs> the trucks are just so they a, don't. a badge different, and the people driving those trucks are just like a polo shirt different. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. T-shirt wow. versus polo. Yeah. It's true. It's wow. not one drink versus two drink different. It's, it's just like it's purely a hat wardrobe. And then a hat with a top cut out, which <laughs> yeah. is a visor. You yeah. know what I mean? It's kind of it's the yeah. same thing. Yeah, yeah. No, no, this is the Budweiser <laughs> uh Titleist tournament, not right. just a Budweiser. <laughs> right. Two, wow. Three, four, Budweiser five, invitational. Six. Uh sixth place, Toyota Tacoma. 
Mm. The taco okay. is 3.2% drunk. Kombucha. Has alcohol in it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Their overlanding ranger got them. The Tacoma, yeah. They just, you know, left their tent up. Shit, man. You yeah. know, like. Interestingly, yeah, tied it. with the Tacoma <laughs> is the GMC Sonoma. That was the S10. That's right. that GMC's version of the Chevy yeah. S10. But that's like pre-Colorado. So we're t- this that's is mid- this is this is okay. Right, yeah, it's a big country outside yeah. the outside that's these walls, I mean. my friend. Right, that's what yeah. We're outside, <laughs> outside <laughs> these fucking walls, bro. Then the A4, the A4 that, takes like so. There's only about two me. tenths of a percentage point between Ford Contour and GMC Sonoma. They're the top, the bottom seven. And they're not giving us years here. That's the hard part no, because no. when you're talking Silverado, though. We can take that back. True. Silverado goes so, a ways. Audi A4, a what year, right? I mean, that's the hard thing. It doesn't say. Right. It does not say. But the, the A4 takes a big jump. Right. Uh, a, a, almost half a percentage point above the GMC Sonoma. Next up from that, the Chevy S10. I was going to say the, the S10. The S10 owners are three quarters of a percent more drunk than their Sonoma counterparts. They've been making it since, wow. let's see, 81 to 2012. No, still still going in, oh yeah, well, Colorado. So interesting, okay. I, think the, I think the S10 might have been going a little longer than the GMC. So like, whereas the Silverado and the Sierra are the, pretty much the same amount of drunk, the Chevy version of the midsize truck, much more drunk. What, really? The, yeah, yeah. Half a percentage point. The S10 is half percentage point more drunk than the Sonoma. Cheaper, do they, cheaper, do they, but do they actually talk about how many they sold? Because I actually wonder about that too. Because what we're talking about here, there's a whole mm. other element this of is like purely percentage of owners. Because I'll bet you there's more, way more GMC Sierras sold in the context of the 1500 Silverado. Than Here's what I think comes S10 into version. I think comes into play. A lot of these folks don't have enough money for really good lawyers. Hmm. Like, that's why I was like, oh, Range Rover's on this list for sure. But they just get out of it. Yeah, they try true. their way out that's of true. it. That's yeah. true. That's a way. So how about the next big jump, massive jump, three and a half to f- three and a half to We're four going and a quarter percent. We're going Mopar. Two and one, three and a half to four and a quarter. Oh, Charger. The Subaru WRX. Wow. Subaru WRX owners are wow. pretty damn drunk. <laughs> Pretty drunk. Wow. It's not all-wheel drive, though. Uh, they yeah. think they can just they can go over gardens. They yeah. can go through backyards. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It the car sends will go anywhere. driving uh, ability from the <laughs> drunk driver to the driver who's less drunk. I think it just gives you more confidence to get behind the wheel because you've got symmetrical all-wheel drive. They've been drive. watching WRC. Yeah. They're getting excited. And they think they're a hero. That's true. I get now, that. Now, I will say, Sat- Thad sent me two lists yesterday. The other list was most ticketed vehicles. Oh, and while geez. we don't need to go through that, the most ticketed vehicle by a lot is the Subaru WRX. Wow. <laughs> by a lot. 40% of Subaru WRX owners have a ticket on their record. True. I 40. Mean, yeah. Well, when you hear that exhaust, I think, guys, I mean, that's not, that might be just the, you know, police officers hear the sound. It's like, you yeah. know, the bird call. So the WRX is at is at four point two percent. Holy cow! Right, we started at just under three with the Ford Contour, and and uh, you dove into the pool, and we changed directions, but you weren't wrong, Matt Crook, because the drunkest vehicle on the road, at five percent. Is the Dodge Ram 2500? Saw it coming. We were go- <laughs> definitely going Mopar. You know what I mean? It's, it, that's why their slogan is Mopar or no car. You know what I mean? It's like well you're done. in or you're out. Well done. <laughs> you're in the car. You're out of the car. That's it, man. And getting in the back of a different car. That's mm-hmm. incredible. Drunkest vehicle on the road. Five percent of all Ram 2500 owners wow. have a, pri- a prior DUI, wow. one wow. in 20. It's either the Ram or their, your Chevrolet legs, you know what I mean? That's extraordinary, Jeez right? Louise. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I thought that was a fun one. I like that. No, that was good. That was um, really good. Yeah, I, th- I, wanted to, I wanted to talk about that, and I thought that was it was a, g- a good corner from my depressing um, – Fuel prices, moment uh, of thing. levity, moment of moment of levity. But like really, needed. the fuel prices. I mean, they're ridiculous, right? But in the end, and don't get top me wrong, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying that everybody. Off? It's 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 hard. It's hard for a lot of people. I'm not saying that, but in the end, it sucks. But let's just say, okay, so it's an additional dollar, and you fill up twelve gallons. It's twelve dollars. It sucks. True. 
It does well, suck. Well, it, it dis it but, fuel prices disproportionately affect those at the bottom of the income ladder, right. and, and that's what's really and that's what I'm saying. As does inflation, that's what's right, I mean, right, which is a different right. thing. And that's but, what yeah. I'm saying. Well, the, the I mean, salaries don't follow inflation as quickly, right? So unless you work at Westside Collector Car Storage, boom, or the smoking tire. updating monthly, or the smoking tire, no, <laughs> updating, updating monthly. monthly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we gave we gave an inflation raise. We at did. W, at, wow. at not just we we did, but also yeah. at WCCS, I gave an inflation raise. I did. I fucking take care of my people, dude. He does. I, I take good. care of my people. They're important. They people are, people they are, are important. more important than additional dollar signs in your bank account. You better believe it. They are. No, for sure, 100%. Because, you know, when when you're appreciated and what you do is appreciated, everybody sleeps better at mm-hmm. night. This you is know? why I, neither of you will ever be a titan of industry. Well, I was last year. I was it's fine with me. Yeah, we, we've both been titan. <laughs> last <laughs> la, last episode, titan I was talking bus. about this, this Boeing uh, documentary that's on. Right. I said it was on uh, Amazon. It's on Netflix. It's, I need to watch this. It yeah, it's the thing about the seven thirty seven Max. Yeah, it's fucked up. Sure, but basically, they value their share price over their passengers and right. over their employees and over their safety. And every step of the way, it was keep that stock value high because we're all getting fucking rich with our suits well, they're, on. They're playing the Mopar game. You have 5%, you're going to get pulled <laughs> over, right? It's kind of like the same thing as crashing. It, the odds are pretty good. Jesus. But when you get, you really get screwed, you know? Yeah. It's kind I, I of the want game. to do a bit where the Boeing people hire someone from Mopar, but I want Dodge to give me cars in the future. So oh, man. <laughs> Oof, that's tough. They do Mopar make, is going yeah. EV, and their motto is tear up the streets. Isn't everybody going EV? Tear up the streets. Tear why, up the why, streets. Why, but why would that? Let's save the planet by destroying the road that we drive on. Right. Why would that? What, what does that have to do with EVs? Nothing. Right. That's the point. Mm. Well, they, But they want to continue the muscle car image. Because yeah. so much of their image is based on noise. But we're really. not stupid anymore. I realize that, to be honest, like a Tesla no, no, is no, no, just no. insane. I mean, listen, you got to understand something. A lot of people are we're stupid. fucking stupid. We're real stupid. We are. Oh, we are. Okay. Outside these walls, my friend. Right. <laughs> we are stupid. The Hummer EV. I read that Mac Hogan. That was piece. great, right? Mac Hogan wrote a great piece for Own Track that kind of echoed what I, I wrote for my piece at the Intercooler. Um, in order to convince a lot of our country that EVs are cool and that our planet is worth saving, it's where it, we need to we need to find a way to go where they are. Right. Which no, I guess means yeah. Really fucking wasteful, heavy EVs. Not actually like a fit and yes i know that of a, course a, a tesla plaid or a tycon turbo s like these are yeah. efficient vehicles when driven efficiently you know sure. what i mean like sure you drive a plaid in an efficient manner and you will get a lot of range like totally makes sense but like they need to be convinced out of their king ranch they want to see their electric their their <laughs> yeah you know meters spinning in the circles yeah. right that makes no, sense no, fucking yeah, pansy man. ass fucking bullshit yeah uh, i get that david tracy had a really good thread going today about how mpg is a better measurement of efficiency than mpge because right now everyone just goes well what's the range of this vehicle and right go, oh 450 on electric and everyone goes wow that's so great i can go really far and it's electric but with MPG, you're going, well, how far can I go with this unit of fuel? Correct. And it incentivized more efficient systems and lighter cars, whereas now you just put a bigger battery in, and you may be using a lot of power to move a shorter distance, but if you make the battery big enough, the range goes up, well, and everyone goes, ooh, yeah. Remember when I asked, more to uh, actually right? get... Yeah, it's interesting. It was interesting. Remember point. when I asked the Lucid guys about the range versus the Plaid and the Taycan, and they go, well, listen, you know... It's not about ultimate range for us. It's about a uh, unit of kilowatt hours. And, per and mile. They, and they sent yeah. me the the math that showed that um, that their vehicle, the Lucid Air Dream, uh, didn't just go further than the Model S Plaid because of a bigger battery pack. It also went further per kilowatt hour. Well, the goal uh, would be to, to use yeah. less electricity so there's less pull on the grid, right? Of course. Because right. as it right. is, but people don't, There's. you're right, there's a lot of things that need to be taught in that whole world because it's a completely tough. different man. It's, it's the, a different the whole animal. vocabulary is tough. Yeah. And, and like, I have, I have, I'm supposed to know it and I still yeah. struggle like with the, with the, the terms and yeah. like that kind of thing. Tri- it's, it's AAA hard. is smaller than double A. Yeah. D, D or bigger. Double, what, double D's is still the best you can and have, right? Nine volt, you can stick on your tongue and it makes it tingle. 
I, I, I want the things kids did before iPhones. Right. Which I yeah. know sounds like an old statement, but we're like, well, we're really fucking bored. Like, yeah. what happens if we touch these electrodes? There yeah. you go. You get shocked, <laughs> and then you talk about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like the. I, I, I'm the only the only vehicle for a family that um, so far I should say that I would put money down on, and that I probably will, is uh, to replace the LR4 would probably be a Rivian R1S. We get one. Uh, is it next week? The following week. I can, we've, I'm very excited yeah. to drive one. I, I rode my my buddy Larry. Uh, lives in Ohio, actually. So he was one of the first guys there. He's had a creative, and uh, great guy. And we took a ride in the truck. And me being a detail oriented kind of designer and knowing the just the details. I want Easter eggs, right? Mm-hmm. I want to continually be surprised. I want to be six months in, and be like. Holy cow! Look at this! Like I want to, I just I want the the specialness to feel like I'm driving something. The Rivian has that. I, I the the pull handles. You look on the top. Things are detailed. I, I don't know if they can hold that forever, but my goodness, right now it's it, it, there's it just feels good. It feel it like gets me right. So I think yeah. Camisa was into it, and he's yeah. a hard sell. Yeah, well, he's a Volkswagen guy. Yeah, probably likes the Beetle too. It's he the thing have, is, yeah, we had an amazing discussion about the ID four uh, and why it's you know awful. Yeah. That thing sucks. Um, he also just crapped on the uh, EQS. Oh, uh, I saw that. My hard. goodness. Which you know what? Like he is a he is so good at at crafting and if he's going to crap on something, he is going to do it. Poignantly, and, yeah, he he's makes gonna it, fucking stick knives in the weak, but it's in specific the weak at least. Yeah, 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 shotgun blast. Well, yeah. he makes it lock. He make he locks it tight, but it's. I mean, it is subjective, but also the it's it's subjective to almost the point that everybody is in the same camp as what they're you know in regards to what they're looking for. He he, it's subjective, but he meets me where I'm at, and yeah, I agree. If I'm sure, that's, that's what I'm looking. for. I don't for. always agree with him. Sure, I've, I mean, of there's course. there's I've 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 actually got. Uh, when it comes to Camisa specifically, right, as opposed to other reviewers, like I know Chris Harris is a better driver than me, but it's very rare that we have completely differing opinions on a car. Mm-hmm. It's very rare that he will point something out that I don't notice at all. Like, you right. know what I mean? Like, yeah. he he might tell me how a car is at fucking getting 30 degrees of opposite lock, and I didn't have a chance to do that. So, okay, great, good, you know, good job, Chris. Sure, but like, I get imposter syndrome. With Camisa, when he, I had a car for a week and he had a car for a week, and he finds shit where I'm like, well, I didn't find that. I didn't even fucking notice what he's talking about. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) That's when I really get, you know, it's like, it's kind of the opposite of like, um, someone emailed me today and they were like, Randy Pope said that the V6 Camaro is just as good on the track as a 10 year old 911. You know, what do you think? Should I get a V6 Camaro instead of a 10 year old 911? And I was like, well, that's a ridiculous question because Randy's a race car driver. And Randy doesn't know that 30 pints of ice cream will fit in the <laughs> trunk. These, these are the things that normal people are going to ask. And Randy's just over here just, you know, talking about fast. performance he's a, he's and a fucking things. Randy you know, Louise, yeah, Randy's you know? talking about shock damping yeah. and, like, you know, and stuff that, that, that doesn't – I'm not saying it doesn't matter. Well, it's things but I – it's, But it's only half the equation, how a car behaves on the racetrack. But Randy's building your ego if you purchase that vehicle because you're going to repeat everything he says. But realistically, if you're driving that thing, you really just want to make sure you have enough room in the trunk for your your, your, your girlfriend's friends. I said, did Randy mention that you can get this for 75 a day from Hertz? Because I'll tell you that. Yeah. And you can't get it. You can't get a 997S for 75 a day from Hertz. No. You know, like you just, you know. But that's that's true. And I think that, that that's where... Obviously, it's subjective. Jason but there are some straight real up gives details. me imposter syndrome. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad he's my friend. Yeah, like, and that's why I'm glad we can have we can have chats about stuff. But like, he straight up finds things that like don't even occur to me. That's fine. And it's my whole job. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> no, it's good, right? Hey, he makes do you, you have someone? You do you have someone right. that you worked with that gives you imposter syndrome? I mean, I guess. I feel like when you work with really good people in certain areas, they're always going to give you imposter syndrome. But I actually, I want to work with more people that give me imposter syndrome because it only makes me stronger. And it's usually the imposter syndrome hits me hard when it's things that I'm insecure in or things that I don't know enough about or things that, you know, I need to learn, right? But hanging out with those people obviously teach me. So, you know, but I think if, but I think as, that's why celebrities date celebrities right because they get in there and they're like holy shit I can date Jennifer Aniston <laughs> right and then she Jennifer Aniston's going oh my gosh this 
Zach guy's Clavin. Paying, this guy's, Zach Clavin's <laughs> paying attention to me. You know what I mean? So, but I think that's where we're at. So I think when you get, I mean, there's always going to be an amount of imposter syndrome, right? Well, there's also I mean, like people can direct their knowledge to like only a few things really mm, or you right. can you can be well-rounded right. or you can like have really deep knowledge on a couple of things so when i hang out with with sam sam smith his knowledge of like old car suspension setup yeah. is amazing yeah, yeah, yeah right. like when we drove that alpha up there and he's like this thing's fucked and i'm right. like well it felt okay but and he's, he's like raced. no no but it's supposed to feel <laughs> yeah like this he used to and work it actually on them. feels like this he and raced them yeah. he raced n- a number of them yeah. and so he's right. like and I, i've just seen him come in and go i think there's too much bar here that tire's a little bit too inflated. Like, he just knows that stuff. And for a while, I was like, I feel like an absolute moron. So then I went and bought books about, like, setup and things like that. Because, it, like you said, it inspires right. you to go, well, I either can build this yeah. muscle or I can just sit here and be weak and feel bad about it. But now riding with you in the car, then I still don't know as but, much but, as... But you know more, right? So then <laughs> all of a sudden, more, I'm yeah. like, damn it, Zach knows my car sucks, yeah. right? So then I need to step up my game. So I think it's kind of the same thing. I think, but that's hopefully, hopefully, when we all hang out, we just make each other better, right? Yeah, yeah. That's actually yeah, what yeah. I hope, right? Yeah. So, but I, but I agree. Camisa's great. Obviously, Lieberman. I was ninety percent agree with Lieberman on stuff. Do you? Yeah. Is that, your, that the, he's your Jew spirit animal? No. Well, no. I, I ordered a spider, obviously, right? And I and I and I ordered. Well, a, I'm uh, your spirit animal because we both sure. we both discovered <laughs> that we ordered spiders. And I did order oh. a Ford Maverick, right? Because it's a fantastic little truck that'll tow four thousand pounds. Yeah, we ordered spiders, but because he ordered his through a California dealer, his yeah. wasn't on the boat. It's true. So he's gonna get his before I get mine, even though I was supposed to get mine before he got. Hire his. that diver; he'll get yours off the bottom of the ocean. You can win. Yeah, that's true. Continue. Someone, or at least just someone, his carbon uh, ceramic. Someone emailed. That's me a good point. I did this last show, but someone emailed me and had a proposal for fucking recovering cars. Really? Yar, dude, I like it. Does, can you just like can you entertain it a bit though? Like, I want you should go at least go like thirty percent of the way into it to see. I could even entertain it. The follow up was about forty eight hours later. The guy I wrote back to this guy's email, <laughs> and he responded with forty eight hours Yar. later. He was like, I just saw how deep the boat is. Obviously, I I got ahead of myself. That was it. Jacques Cousteau would do it. Why didn't you tell him to contact James Cameron, get the submarine. That's the what sub. I'm talking You'll about. Fuel up the day rate. Yeah. Just fucking swing <laughs> this thing along, man. He wanted a day rate. Hmm? He want, no, that was the pitch. The pitch was that he would go get the things off the boat, but I would pay a day rate. There was a Lamborghini. Uh, <laughs> what was on there, right? Was there a- 50 uh, Lambos. All the final series of Entenors. They had right. to restart production. Damn. That's some gnarly, yeah. that's some gnarly stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. Because of many cars, electric cars, right? It started because it was a lithium fire. Probably, probably an eighty-four. It's so funny. You're not the first person to say that. Probably what? They don't want to, You don't want to. You can't. You don't want to. It couldn't be an e-tron. It couldn't be a Tycon. It right. must have been an ID4. The ID4 <laughs> is kind of cool, but the touch screen is like unbelievable. No, it's a disaster. The, yeah. I, I can't believe the UI is of like all of it, it is bad. UI UX is like, what are you thinking mm-hmm, here? Yeah. And that's the only thing you can touch and see. Right. I mean, we yep, wish we wish that mind. the yep. GTI and Golf R were better, but they ain't. No. But what same. happened? They were always the, like that's why I connect with Volkswagen is because the details, right? Because yeah. it's the nerdy things that someone else won't care about that I care about. But then I feel like I'm on the inside. Yeah. But now I feel like I'm like, oh no! Oh. You like, can't believe a broom uh-oh. full of Germans sat around the table and went, "Yes, this is good." Just like this. Yeah, get rid of the rear window switch <laughs> completely. Let's make it a haptic, but like that yeah. was. So you, right. you're saying like they used to sweat the details. This yeah. seems like they didn't even sweat the macro stuff. They're just no, like, no, no. They just like said, "Does it have AC?" Ah, that's good. Yeah, send it. <laughs> you know, Kami- like Kamisa. Say, uh, when I went to see him up north, we, I did a show with him. Yeah, and he did 25 minutes yeah. on that car. Well, it's because it hurts and fucking yeah. destroyed yeah, yeah. it. I wait, mean, just wait. destroyed it. But he destroyed it because it hurts him. Yeah, yeah. because He's like per- people he like pers- it, it is yeah. personal because I backed the damn brand for so long that all of a sudden it's like, you're gonna do this to me. <clears throat> You know? yeah. This time, yeah. this, yeah. yeah, it's kind of a weird one. I mean, yeah. I, like you didn't need to reinvent the wheel. You just had to make a fucking electric Tiguan. What are you doing? When the E Golf was amazing, just give me double the range. Yeah. Why? Because yeah. I like a golf. Yeah. Golf doesn't take fuel. Sounds good yeah. to me. Just give me some range. And it's got well, little LED that, lights in the bottom. Looks cool. That's what he said about the EQS. He said, "Why didn't you just build an electric S class and call it a fucking day? What, oh my what is gosh. this whole thing? You yeah. Know? Why? I don't know. And it didn't even look like the the, the concept car. Give me it a concept looks car. So bad. The EQS is not. It's like I'm actually still kind of excited to drive it. I really. I'm am. excited to drive it. I think it, it's but... interesting. I don't think it's as ugly as people say it is. Oof. I think it's weird looking and different. 
but it kind of looks like a movie prop from Demolition Man, and yeah. that's okay. Like, My new house is that. going to have the three seashells in it. You know? It. It's fine. Yeah, um. but, I, but I think Mercedes for the last 10 years has just hit really good triples and home runs in terms of design. I really right. do. And then with Except this rolls the out- SL. Except the SL, that's a very good point. But the C class, E class, S class, yeah, which all looked about the same, like looked really good. And then the EQS but, comes out, and I was like, "This is so nondescript, lacks does identity." It ha- is it a like pod. a point two zero drag it's coefficient? Very slippery. It's it really slippery. And right? it basically depends on which website you look at. Is is it slipperier than the Model S or not? Like they're neck and neck. And but it, I don't know, but the fact to me that like I think the, the Model S is still a good looking car, especially from the profile, and yeah. the EQS is just like. Melted, I will give Tesla credit. People think I don't give Tesla credit for anything. Yeah. Model S is an attractive vehicle. Mm-hmm. It is. It's slippery and it's attractive. But I feel like Mercedes had the attractive car and they they put the the bike pump on it. And the S yeah. the, the S class and is attractive. Like, too much. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> and it's like, well, the lines were there, but yeah. they kind of inflated. It's like a Big bit. Hero Six. Yeah. Exactly. Mm, right. No, it's. I mean, I want to believe in them because I do enjoy. The only thing Mercedes has screwed up is they're like. Uh, the the fine the guy who like puts the final touches on who's like this is a special edition great yellow stripes everywhere <laughs> oh yeah yeah right? the designer right. guy the special design- edition yeah. <laughs> it's the like, launch wait, edition what? shit yeah what are you yeah doing? no this is beautiful that imagine guy, it's in color like that's that guy moonlights for Aston oh my gosh like I mean just no we murdered this yeah Oof. but I mean terrible details and I and I like Mercedes mm-hmm. right I have my Two three sixteen valve. Then I'm, we'll see if it gets. How many together, cars do you have? You know, fifteen cars. You have fifteen fucking cars. Yeah, I do. Oh my god. <laughs> Where? How many of them run? Not judging, just asking. Safe space. Four, maybe. You okay. need to really get some self control together, my friend. So no, you and Brian Scotto all, what do you, are. What do you mean? They're just accruing people. in value. What do you mean? All of a sudden, I have like. Uh, they're yeah. not accruing in value. They are in, in pieces. Oh, uh, I guarantee they are unrestored. They're, what do you mean? Remember. Well, the these cars mm-hmm. are not because you're you're modifying all of them. It's not like you're buying mint mint condition no stories examples that no, are just but when you buy a nine sixty four for nine grand, it just doesn't really matter. What, I, I'm not know. yeah that that's your black fine. car or no uh, different one? midnight blue. Oh, no, the black different, car is seventy nine. Yeah, but like that that sixteen valve car that you're doing all the shit to. No, the sixteen valve car is completely stock right now. Outside I of thought like, you were doing a whole thing. Oh, oh, the Mercedes. The Sorry. Mercedes. So Mercedes. Yes. Well, that car is now. You're, Porsche it's Brewster, like a DTM Porsche thing. Brewster Green, full tub fenders, full Evo one conversion, stroke to a two point six sixteen valve. Right. Got the Gertrag. Everything's like no. But, Does that run? No, it's currently in, being built, but. That's right. going to be awesome. But even as it is, I paid 500 bucks for the car. Right? But like, don't you think even you should if I finish some of these projects before you just buy more shit? No, because when these amazing projects come up, like this Targa that fell on my lap, 74 Targa for 15 grand, all set up, what, why would I say no? I'm on Matt's side. I'm Crook's side. <laughs> I mean, because don't you have to I keep am. it somewhere? Doesn't that, isn't that, doesn't I've that cost I've got cars money? in Montana, New York, you know, like you just... I guess... No, it's stressful, but I, yeah, I've just I've had a lot of cars before. The Mercedes, it's become, it's become a pain in the, the ass. The Mercedes before. is at home. This Land Rover is here. The Mark II white the white GTI is at home. The 914 is at home. The 74 Targ is at home. Um, the 16 valve Mark II GTI is in Ohio at my shop. The Ren, Ren Pig, the 79 SC is at my shop. My 91 Turbo. 964 is at Yoast Automotive and Costa Mesa. My 80 Series Land Cruiser is an Azusa at RPM. My 73 Series 3 Land Rover is uh, in Montana. My B5 Audi A4 Avant is in um, New York. Uh, I sold my. I, mean, I guess oh, you the only kind in the paint of have shop. a job, so it's like. The Beatles in the paint shop. I've got. And then I've got the Spider and the Maverick on order. So they're. they're one of them's in Michigan and the other one's in a dream in. Germany, I don't this know. This seems like a so, headache, man. I would wager that it's less stressful to have more cars that aren't running than like a third of the cars that all run. Because you had to register all of them. Right. Keep them all insured. Yeah. All, keep all that stuff. And if 
I don't know how many of yours aren't running or, or in, in process mm-hmm. that's out of your hands, but that actually yeah. makes it easier probably. Well, and, it, and it's just more focused, especially now as I get older. I have to knock out these specific things to get them out. So my 914 runs now, the Mark 216 valve runs, 8 valve GTI runs, this Land Rover runs, my 73 Land Rover runs, you know, the B5 Audi A4 runs, um, the 79 SC runs, the... Um, no Japanese cars. The Beetle runs. Uh, I have a 80 series Land Cruiser, so oh, I, do, yeah. I do have okay. that out in Azusa. So. That just seems like a lot to keep track it of. Is, it is totally a lot to keep track of. But yeah. I've, I've also got to know that when I make these specific purchases, like I'm not losing, right? So I spent 15 grand on, the, on a rough Targa. The fact is I can turn around right now for, let's say, 30 grand okay. out sure. of to get rid of. But I can also fix it up, have some fun with it, do some things, and sell it for even more. So... I'm basically investing in these cars and these these different pieces, right? So if all these cars were finished, I mean, I probably have close to a million dollars in cars, but I don't. But I didn't buy them for that reason though. In the beginning, I bought these things like collecting Hot Wheels because I was just whatever an idiot. Uh, but I'm like, oh, sick a 964 in Texas, like everything I want, you know, wide body car, no engine, no trans, but I want an NA car anyway. So it's like I'll go grab this thing and pick it up. I mean, it was just a build. It was anything else that I wanted to grab because I couldn't afford something else at the time. But the fact is now to buy a wide body car for nine grand, you're insane. So, sure. you know, now I have all these cars that I couldn't afford today, mm-hmm. but all these cars have gone up in value. I mean, theoretically, I could just take the 964 and say, hey, Singer, you want a 964 with a VIN? Here you go. And yeah. all of a sudden I have 70 grand in my pocket or whatever they're taking now for, for builds. But I can also invest another 50 into it and sell it for, you know, some crazy I, number, yeah, no, so. I guess it just seems like a. It's just fifteen seems like a lot. It seems like a lot. It is a lot, but I'm a dreamer. This mm-hmm. is kind of like where my ADHD like excitement goes, and things fall into my lap. And it's it's a smart it's a smarter thing to take it and realize that mm, probably shouldn't have done this and sell it for more money, right? To to quick flip something as opposed to taking something uh, and and saying no to it. There's argument there, but for myself. <laughs> I have the space. I have a lot of people that I work with and partners and things like that that I work with. And, and in the end, it's fun. This is the thing. This is like the, this is my excitement. These are the things I love to do. So when I find something fun, I mean, I don't know. Let's have some fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, it's yeah. it's fine. It just it seems exhausting. It is a bit exhausting, but I, if, as long as I know where things are at and I can focus on specific vehicles at you know at one at a time or three at a time, whatever it is. Like at a certain point, yeah. it's kind of like I wonder if you actually like want them done. Uh, yes, for sure I want like, them. But, but see, but some cars like the Mercedes. There are certain cars and my Audi A4. The for Mercedes that much. is the is the one example I keep going back to because it seems like it's been so long that that thing has been. Being well, it built. has, but also the weird thing is too with the Mercedes. When I started building that, like nine years ago, I cut the fenders off right and put an Evo One kit on it and started my piece and started building into that. At that point, nobody made parts for it. So you're like, oh, you want window seals? <laughs> Fight them off a used car that are good. Now, yeah. all of a sudden, like, now the cars are cool. Now Mercedes is offering parts. Now I can re- have these things readily available. They're a little more expensive, but they're actually available. Mm-hmm. So there's different things there in regards to the cars that I'm building that allow for things to be more accessible as time goes on. Not to say that's why I'm taking so long, but the fact is I'm not rich. I don't have tons of money. And I'm dreaming, and I'm having fun, and... I don't know. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just figuring it out as I go. But the fact is, any of these cars that I have sitting, I'm never taking a loss on unless they just go up in flames. At which point, to be honest, if everything just disappeared at this very moment and never had a car again in my life, I'd be perfectly fine, right? The cars don't define who I am. It's not like I live for my cars, but they're very much a fun, creative outlet for me. And if I had to sell my cars right now, I would still make a profit. Even if I sold them immediately right now, just let everything go, Mm -hmm. I would still make money on my cars. So I'm not losing. I guess it's just like that's what I choose to fill my brain space with and yeah. organizing. I, if you looked at my phone, I have lists on every car. Even cars I don't even have yet, I have full lists in regards to what I would do to them, <laughs> how I would do them, what, what I would yeah. look at and everything. Because like I was saying, the Mercedes, the Audi, I don't necessarily see myself driving these cars necessarily. Like they don't necessarily fit my persona. At, I don't imagine myself in them. But I do want to see these cars exist within uh, conceptually, hmm. right? So hmm. I – I see this car and I dream of like an STW Audi A4 Avant and a car that Audi should have built that's homologated and all these different things, but they didn't do it. But I want to see it exist. So I'm almost building something to exist more so than me actually driving it from an artistic and conceptual side, right? So Mm -hmm. like my Mercedes, there's a whole story around my Mercedes and why it was built and how I'm doing it, right? So let's say 
In 1987, Mercedes was building the 2.3 16-valve. Um, everything was building building up to this car becoming better and better in um, DTM. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, BMW, they had their 318, 320, whatever it was, and all of a sudden they launched in 88 the BMW M3. But Mercedes in 87 had already launched their first show car into BTCC, which is British Touring Car Championship, uh, with an Evo 1. Right, so they debuted the car at Autosport in nineteen late eighty seven. Yeah, in British Racing Green with a full like houndstooth interior, with a built engine by Cosworth, and everything was set to go. And then all of a sudden, BMW came out with the M three. So Mercedes pulled all their money out of BTCC and put it into DTM, created the Evo One to go up against the BMW M three. So what happened was there was an, a car left over from Autosport that just went into a barn and disappeared. Nobody knows where it went. Well, I'm building that car in this fictitious concept. No, so you, you, British you Racing Green with a story Houndstooth about the car. And, and, and Mountune, who's building the engine, is all ex-Cosworth, right? And that was, that's a company that I'm involved with. So for me, it tells that story, but it also gives me definitive lines that I can stay within to make sure the story holds true, that to a certain degree, outside of modern ignition and different things like that, uh, and fuel injection, I should say, is... I, you know, I am at least building it to period in regards to what they would have done back then, which to me is really fun because I have this car that's built that is basically a what if. Yeah. What if Mercedes would have launched a car, a homolog- homologation car well, in the UK? Well, that's like the, the story of Gunther works, right? It's like sure. what if Porsche, you know, built developed a-, a 993, you know, for 25 years mm-hmm. beyond where they stopped. Yeah, same thing. Exactly. I mean, that's, in- that's interesting, but I think the most interesting thing is that you're – you said you're not building them to drive them. It's it's more of an artistic storytelling expression but than think, it is like. Well, the driving I'd part like is within that. it, right? That's why I'm keeping the Gertrag. track. That's why I want to know what those DTM drivers felt when they were throwing that, when they were running with 230 horsepower. If I wasn't doing that, I would just throw an AMG C63 engine in it and just go rip ass. But I'm actually spending more money to stroke a 2.3 or 2.6 and do all these different things to feel the power and the feeling of what the DTM drivers were driving, right? So, I mean, in certain ways, I'm keeping it pure to what it was, and I want to know what they felt when Mm. I drive it, but it's not necessarily a personal vehicle in the context of, you know, you see yourself in cars, right? Like, you see yourself in a pink spider, right? I see myself in a Beetle, right? (laughs) But I guess it's just you picture yourself in certain cars. Those cars, I don't necessarily picture myself, let's say, cruising around Ojai in, like, a super low DTM race car. It just doesn't necessarily fit with like what a, how I'm living right now, but I want to see it exist. Mm-hmm. So I think from a conceptual standpoint, some cars I get involved with just because I simply, I want to see this exist. This is something yeah. that should have existed, so let's go ahead and build it and have some fun with it. And I think, yeah. I don't know, that's fun. I think that's mm-hmm. fun. I think that dreaming, I just like a kid, that's kind of where I get the excitement. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I think why you're I kind cars. of like, it's like real life Forza, where Forza, I don't know, five or whatever, Horizon, like you could just swap stuff. So Thad and I made the V8 all-wheel drive Fiesta because you guys had a Fiesta ST yeah, at the yeah. time. And it was like, well, if we had all the money in the world, what would be a fun thing to drive and like see around? Like this would be ridiculous. It's and a modern-day so, yeah. Ford Shogun, right? I mean, yeah, that's so, what you're building. so why not do it and see if you can make it work? And I think to me that's just the, the, when you're sitting around, like, wow, what if, right? Well, what if we actually got to create these cars? And I don't necessarily have the money to just build it in 10 months. So, yeah, it takes me some time, but – over time, these things will get accomplished. But you're right. I don't want to be the 70-year-old guy with the coolest car collection that never ran. Yeah. So there are things that I sold my 74 Audi Fox. I'm selling my 80 series. I mean, I've, just, I've been cars. through a bunch of these yeah. projects, mm-hmm. whether it was this Fox Body Mustang sure. thing that took two and a half years. Right. You know, the Safari project, even though it was like lead. You know, it, it took a long time. Like, Oh, yeah. So to have a bunch of those going at once... Oh, it's exhausting, and it's yeah. a lot on there. But I, but me and my ADHD, yeah. I enjoy that. Right, yeah. I, well, I that's like cool. that. Yeah, just like business, I'm managing here, running over here, and doing this. And this person's calling me, and I'm balancing all these pieces. See, my I'm goal is this, to like, not have that. So that's um, my. It's probably just me. No, no, no. It's not. But like but, having been there, my goal is to right. be 
over here where I'm I'm not doing that. Anymore. But for me, it's more time management because yeah. understanding that those things actually help me feel alive and the excitement that's happening. But allotting specific amount of time to slow down yeah. and be okay, not going crazy, has been a learning experience. Yeah. To know that I can be crazy here and get all these things done, but I need to learn how to turn off. Yeah. You know, um, and learning to turn off and just say, I don't care. I'm spending my time with my family. Um, learning something new. I'm doing whatever I'm doing for myself um, is incredibly important mm. because I still want to do those things. I can't just necessarily turn those things off and say those don't matter anymore because I still want to see all these things come to fruition. So it's just a matter of, uh, for myself personally allotting the right amount of time to make sure those things still get accomplished. But you're right. If I can't do them all, that's why I'm starting to sell cars because I don't have the financial ability to do all of the cars I dream about. But I need to build a few of them and, and see these things come to fruition. And if those sell, they'll sell for a lot more money, and hopefully then I can build upon those things, right? Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think it's just a matter of, I don't know. In the end, I get back to it's fun. I don't know. Even just having cars and dreaming about them, there's some fun even in just dreaming because I think the dreaming aspect is really what keeps us alive. Building this place here for yourself, there was this dream right just as much of a car and anything else that when it, <laughs> but i mean it was right when it finally I mean, came to yeah yeah no yes but it was five like awful years of course <laughs> like, but that but, but like, okay but the awful those five awful years created you're so much different than when you started five years ago just personally sure sure yeah and that's cool yeah that's i rad. know a lot about concrete yeah and steel. there you go <laughs> and rebar but, i mean but that's rad the next one's not going to take you five years or be no. As stressful hope no it's not and i but uh, you're right but I can't imagine what it would have been like if I was building Doing 10 at a time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, No, I get it. I like, get it. there's get it. full, yeah, and yeah. there's people, like, yeah. like when, when I filled this one up, it took five years to build, it took four months to fill. Mm -hmm. There are people who would go, I'm on to something. I'm going to build fucking yeah, see, five more of these at once all over. You know, and and I probably could have done that if I really wanted to. No, but you wouldn't but enjoy I life. Don't, no, and I don't. So, but I, I think that's the so thing. So I'm doing one. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on one. that. I'm yeah. with you on that, and I'm not building them all at once. But if a building came across your doorstep where you're like, wait, that's where I want to be in five years, and they said, Matt, this thing's just whatever. It's a hundred grand. Can yeah. you just you'd be like, I'll take that. Yeah. I'll take that land in that building because in five, I'm gonna in five years. I know I'm gonna want to take care of this. At which point, yeah, it's the same thing. I think you know, Targa falls in my lap. I mean, I guess it didn't like, occur to me that a bunch of these cars are not. They're just sitting. They're literally just sitting. They're just sitting. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, well, they're just it, sitting. It, I guess. So that's... while I get these things, you know, while I organize myself, and this year I, mean, I turned forty, this year, so for me it's a big piece of like, cool. Can I get? You know, phys physically healthy, mentally healthy, from, you know, fiscally healthy, like learn all these things and better myself to make sure that getting into my 40s is my best decade yet, which means finishing some cars, making progress on my cars, selling some cars, you know, figuring out business, figuring out, you know, my health, my mental health, my mm. spiritual health, everything, right? Figuring those things out so that I can make this the be best decade yet. And, and partly of that is really compartmentalizing these projects and figuring out which ones I really do want to finish and I don't. Because as we get older, as much as, as it is fun, there is a very realistic side of me that says, you may not be able to finish all of these, <laughs> right? You know, so, yeah. so, but even still, even the car just sitting there for five years, you know, where something may have been worth five grand five years ago is now worth 20 grand. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I When I'm get, ready to sell, I do get that. the cars mm -hmm. are just sitting, and, and they're sitting in California, so they're not rusting, at which point, hey, let's move these three cars, let's get them out of here. I made, you know, five times the amount of cash. Sure, if I fix them up, I can make 10 times, but let's get them out of here. Bird in the hand, finish it, let's finish these yeah. other cars, you know. So I think um, it's just one of those things that, yeah, again, like I was saying to Zach before, when, when you get old enough, you learn that nobody knows what the heck they're doing. I don't care if you're the CEO of any company. You can't, you don't have no idea what's happening tomorrow. You're flying by the seat of your pants. You're, you may be better than the next person that's doing whatever you're doing. Mm. But in the end, nobody really knows exactly what they're doing, right? So it's the same thing with me. I don't know. I'm just, I'm feeling it, right? It's kind of like, uh, you know. I don't want to say the Magnus Walker, you know, go with your gut. Come on, let's put it together. <laughs> push your passion, you know. I, but I, I want to say, hey, I am, you know, if it feels right, and, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab it yeah. and it, in an educated way. I know I can sell it for more in the future. Sure. I'm not paying eight grand for a Ford Fiesta because 
you know, or I should say Festiva, because I dream of doing a Shogun kit one day because it's a clean car. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I've done that a couple of times. My Mark II 16 valve, I paid a lot of money for it back then. You know, 12 grand, which was a lot two and a half years ago for a Mark II, which is kind of crazy. But now, obviously, I can get my money back, no problem. But it was yeah. just a car I dreamed about in high school. Well, that's, I, you know, I understand that. I think yeah. My cars are the cars I dreamed about in high school. Yeah. So I, I get that. And I've probably done okay on my cars. You've done great. But I have, I have a very limited amount of physical space. Well, mental resources, sure. uh, you know, f- uh, it's, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not super limited on my financial resources, but I have, uh, but I have limited financial resources, of course. Yeah. you know, t- so I can't, I can't have 10 projects going on at a time, especially totally. if they're, you know, high end European car builds, you know, so I, I, it's, uh, you know, when someone says they've got 15 cars going on and they're all in this, a state of build, I'm like, <laughs> Jesus well, Christ, you know? No, they're not all in the state of build. Yeah. And some are Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zach, do we have a bunch from the Patreon? Uh, yeah, two pages. Oh, two, two pages. Two pages of Patreon. Mm. So our I mean, Patreon. Size, size, big font. I like it. If you want to talk, uh, talk to us during the show, if you want to watch the live stream, if you want an ad-free watching and listening experience, Patreon.com slash the Smoking Tire Podcast is the place to do it. Um, you can get in on the live stream for just three dollars a month. You can get an ad-free listening experience for just eight dollars a month, and you can get the early access to episodes plus a ninth podcast, an extra podcast every month for just ten dollars a month at the pro driver level. Let's get to the people. Hunter Sands says, how much more creative have you been able to be in uh, wheel... Uh, oh, okay, sorry. There were wheel questions, which we can skip because hey, you, you know, well, you're done. But how much more creative have you been able to be as wheel manufacturing and materials have improved over the years? Are there designs you wish you could do, but they do not have the structural rigidity required? It's funny. I play in the, I play in the classic game a lot, so obviously in the context of like old wheels mm-hmm. i mean things have progressed considerably but realistically cast wheels are cast wheels forged wheels have progressed but like i was telling zach earlier it's uh, a lot of the u.s companies it's it's like the wild wild west right a lot of them are engineering these wheels a lot of them are just being manufactured and just kind of put out there it's cool wheels um so in regards to like new manufacturing i actually think to a certain degree there's like it's actually pretty stale it's been the same exact manufacturing techniques outside of like flow form and a few other things which is uh still a cast center but the lips and barrels are kind of i want to say not necessarily extruded but you know there's a nose that comes out and uh forms the lips of the wheels Mm -hmm. Um, but besides that really there hasn't been that many you know kind of progressive details in wheel manufacturing Um, I mean 3D printing I think one day will be that I think that when people can order something or design something and someone 3D prints something for you out of out of metal and basically ships it to you I think that's going to be the next big step because realistically there's only you know Two ways to make a wheel. Well, three wheels. To, three ways to make a wheel. Uh, in regards to the basics, is you know, hey, you're either casting something, you're you know, die forging, stamp forging, or you're basically taking, um, you know, rotary forged forging and CNC laid mm-hmm. and CNC cutting it. So um, I'm sure there's obviously various ways to make a wheel other than that. But those are kind of like the primary pieces. So. Um, I don't know. Obviously, yeah, I do dream sometimes in regards to making something that would be um, super wild or crazy concave or just different ideas and things that wouldn't necessarily be possible in regards to, like, structural integrity. But, I mean, for the most part, I dream a, I dream a lot of what uh, of things that should have been or could have been, not necessarily what they will be in the future. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of a weird one when it comes to, like, designing wheels. I, I, I get, I'm very inspired by the past. Mm. Okay. Greg Scott says, uh, can I get a Mount Rushmore of 90s Japanese front-wheel drive cars? Wow. Uh, iconic Japanese. I mean, Integra Type R. Sure. EK9 Civic Type R. It's kind Civic, of, the Civic. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's kind of just, I want to spoon Civic one day just to kind of, it's, it's what I, dra- I, I was I was personally racing my, you know, my, I was drag racing my two liter eight valve golf and I would just destroy them off the line until VTEC hit and yeah. then they just walked me. Prelude right Type SH. You know? yep. Yeah. Fantastic. CRX SI Mugen. Yeah. 
And that's pretty much it, right? Technically speaking, I would say that a Talon turbo all-wheel but drive. But you need the all-wheel drive. It's kind of a front-wheel drive, right? Yeah, Just you, need the all-wheel. you need the all-wheel the, drive. Yeah, the cooler one is the all-wheel drive, but yeah. Right. Yeah. Isuzu Impulse handling my Lotus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joe Leonard, is there any middle ground to be found between ugly EV range wheels and wheels that are aesthetically or traditionally pleasing? You know, I think so. Uh, I, I do think that there, I think there's actually a big empty space in the wheel manufacturing world in regards to making something that's aesthetically pleasing for the EVs. Mm. And I think that the OE, um, you know, the past, like we're talking about the E34 turbines, we're talking about all these different wheels and stuff that they've learned to either cool brakes or whatever else. But, you know, like Tesla put insane amounts of time into their turbine aero covers the to aero actually, wheels, yeah. they really do. They work. They work. Yeah, people have done the, the tests yeah, on those cars with the range wheels versus the, the yeah, cool and, wheels. And what if the aftermarket actually made really cool wheels that were engineered to actually work? But like I was saying, most aftermarket wheel companies don't engineer anything. So in regards to being safe, they can put mm -hmm. out paper mache wheels in regards to the Department of Transportation is concerned, and you'd, you'd buy them and think they're cool until they fell off and your car crashed, and you never live to talk about it, so it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. But realistically, um, I think uh, I think there is a huge market there um, for the EV world, and as things progress, because realistically, they need lighter weight and, mm -hmm. and wheels, and as well as wheels that can actually improve aero, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I guess we'll see where things go. But I think that is super cool. I think it's very interesting and fun. Um, you just have to find the right nerds to want to do something cool. And I think it's going to come very, very soon, obviously. But yeah. there again, the big dogs in the wheel industry are just worried about, you know, yeah, the change. Uh, Sean Gallagher, have you ever had any non-automotive items inspire you to design something new? A piece of architecture, a boat, a plane, et cetera. Yes, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was in the automotive world, then I went into the music industry on tour, touring the U.S., playing in my own bands, managing a bunch of different bands on Universal, Motown, different things like that. Hopped out, went to the fashion industry, doing a lot of different collections for Barney's, Fred Siegel, um, selling denim and things like that. Did a capsule collection for Target, a conceptual capsule collection, did some things there. Hopped back into the automotive industry. So for me, a big part of being in the automotive world uh, and my inspiration and the things that I've learned about is actually completely outside of the automotive world. Uh, the automotive world is full of dinosaurs uh, in the context of marketing and branding and everything else. If you do 10% of what's in the fashion world or anything that's actually contemporary in regards to like, you know, music, fashion, and the automotive world, you're like light years ahead of what anybody else is doing. You yeah. know, it's a very interesting place because, you know, the automotive world is primarily full of people who are just doing this for a hobby and the people trying to make money off of it. So it's a different type of world, but no, 100%. I mean, I find inspiration everywhere. I think it's super fun to find inspiration in different places. And I think that's where you find the unexpected. And um, no, I mean, we should kind of take inspiration from everything, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Navio, are carbon wheels really hard to make and produce? Seems like we would see supercar brands using them for weight savings. Why does a Mustang have them, but a Lamborghini doesn't? I think the Lamborghini, didn't the Veneno use some sort of carbon, uh, either fan maybe, but I, um, a lot well, of companies are actually using carbon wheels. Porsche did for the exclusive Turbo S. Um, uh, Porsche is getting into them mm -hmm. with uh, a new, an, a, the, some of their new products. Um, the Dimags were one where that was a carbon barrel, barrel yep. with metal spokes. Mm -hmm. And Carbon Rev kind of did the whole thing for the Mustang, right. for a lot of these different wheel companies. Um, but it's funny, in my opinion, I think it's really cool, but it's very archaic in the context of carbon fiber is not new and you're literally layering on carbon yeah. and then like applying, you know, I mean, it's very cool. They're for fragile. Lightweight. Yeah. The answer is they're fragile. But it's fragile. also like too much heat. All of a sudden you start getting like separation. You, get, you know, it's great. It is great. But my goodness, like the previous question, will somebody come up with something? Why aren't we 3D printing a polymer plastic wheel? I mean, the wings of a, a, a Raptor jet are held on with 3D printed polymer plastic, you know, as opposed to titanium, which they replaced Whoa. with this 3D printed, you know, uh, bracket, right? Because you can now, with AI, everything, you can computer generate these pieces that are stronger than anything in metal. And especially if you're printing something in a polymer plastic, especially you can print carbon at this point, why not use AI to use a carbon piece to generate the lightest wheel yeah. possible? So I think we're going to see huge jumps here in the future using these different types of material. And the funny thing is, 
it might even be a non-wheel person to in, to come out with the first wheel that's going to be like a six pound 20 yeah, inch yeah. wheel that is the strongest wheel and lightest wheel because AI basically put this piece together. So yeah. I think it'll be interesting to see kind of that come together, but I don't know. The carbon I, revolution wheels on the GT500 yeah. feel really great. Yeah. And they're they are great. And they look and, good. And they look cool. Yeah. Until you hit curbs wrong on the racetrack and they literally explode. Sure. It's just brittle. Right? It's, it's, I mean that's, that's that's that might be I mean the one of the reasons a, a, that wheel might not pass Tuve. Well, it's like, layered, right? It's kind know, of like when you might, build, when might German and German German engineering may not approve something like that. Sure. Well, that's like when you're building a wheel, you don't want to, if you're using a forging, you don't use a cross grain, right? Because, well, it's not distributed evenly. So you have to use a radial forged mm-hmm. forging because the grain is circular in motion as opposed to cross grain. So it's kind of the same thing. I mean, you're layering these pieces on. Obviously, it's symmetrical, so it's a lot stronger than anything that's cross grain, but you're still using something that's been laid on. It's not a solid material to start with. Mm. So it is amazing, and they do a great job. I'm not knocking it by any means. It just is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. I'm kind of waiting for the next route. It's just like in aerospace. They're not building carbon fiber parts anymore. Well, they, they probably are. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to say I'm an expert there or act like I am, but I do know that they are 3D printing these pieces in way stronger plastics and polymer plastics and carbon polymer plastics because you can print something hollow that's way right. lighter, that's way stronger yeah. than before you couldn't machine because it was Koenigsegg impossible. Koenigsegg is doing that kind of exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So I think we're going to see some huge strides in manufacturing here soon. And... I don't know. I'm just interested to see, will it even come from a wheel company Mm -hmm. that will do this? Because, yeah, sometimes you you need outside minds to go, hey, we have this tech. Exactly. Mm. Uh, Dante Casali says, what wheel design features are better for avoiding snow buildup? I typically look for rally style wheels. Uh, Is that a thought, really, when you're doing wheels? Not specifically. I mean, rally style wheels are great because obviously you see a lot of them, they're kind of more closed face, different mm-hmm. things like that to avoid gravel getting in the brakes and such. Mm-hmm. But I mean, um, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily worry about that. I mean, you know, a lot of people from like a, if it was, if we were building a strictly performance wheel that was seeing aggressive abuse from the snow, it would be a different story. It would be engineering specifically for the snow. But because you're, basically generating wheels for the everyday person and you're taking numbers into effect. I mean, you know, you're calculating it that how many people are really going to use these wheels in the snow. Yeah. They're buying other steel wheels or something else for the winter or they're not driving this car in the winter. So it's tough. But yeah, I mean, I bet you the OEs in regards to certain vehicles and things like that are taking into taking that into effect. Rally race wheels do. Like I said, they're, they're covering the brakes as much as possible, but also making sure they're getting the ventilation needed for the brakes. But um I don't know. I guess me being from California also, I've never specifically had an issue where I'm like, this damn snow is filling up my wheel. So yeah, I mean, it usually I, falls I, you know, out It's too. not something I'm specifically thinking yeah. about all the yeah. time. Uh, Austin Modelski says, why are stamp steel wheels so heavy? They have great strength to weight ratio. Why are all factory steelies so heavy? Made of steel. Because... <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like steel wheels. I have them on my LR4. I have them on my 914. I, I, I like steel wheels. I enjoy the way they look. They are heavier, um, but it's very classic. The nice thing is, too, if you're off-roading or doing something and you bend the crap out of a steel wheel, it will bend so you can bang it back. Mm. An alloy wheel will most likely crack, leaving you stranded on the side of the road mm. with no air in your tire. So there are positives and negatives there. I think, for me, the vintage wheels were always steel. Even the 904, you know, Porsche had like a magnesium center with a steel outer. And I think, you know, there were different things that were there, but steel was always the way that you made wheels in the past. Before that, it was wood, right? <laughs> um, so I don't know. They're heavy because they're... Because they're steel. Steel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Klein says, has powder coating materials and processes improved drastically in the last few years? As a casual observer, this seems to be the case. Now I'm worried that Jordan Klein works for a powder coating company and he's trying to catch me in something that I don't know. Um yeah, I mean, I guess in terms of improving, um, I think a lot of people have learned that you need to strip wheels and things like that before you do things, uh, as well as there's a million more colors and depths and different things in regards to powder coat, but powder coat in the same sense is applied the exact same way it's kind of always been applied, to, you know? So um, it's definitely improved in regards to colors and cool pieces and, and two tones and all these different things, but 
Um, Other than that, it's the prep work. It's the prep work yeah. to make sure it sticks right, right? All right, make cool. Make sure everything's there. Um, let's see. James Crowley says, favorite silly, wild, strange, ugly, or unconventional wheel designs like the Ronald Teddy Bears or <laughs> Advan Tries. Uh, I love the Teddy Bear wheel. I thought that was always fun. Uh, Kellner, which is a BMW wheel, um, they launched a, a wheel that was two Ks that were kind of like this mm. and uh, for the BMW E36s. Um, that might be – it's just the K wheel instead of two Ks maybe, but – Kellner with two. Well, there you go. There right it is. There. You can kind of see it there. Uh, actually, on the E36 to the right, you can see the case for it. So, I mean, it was kind of cool. Um, That's a model, I think. It but is a model, still. yeah. <laughs> but, but there was just some fun stuff. Sentra, C E N T R A. Obviously, we all know those wheels. If you don't know the name, you've seen the wheels back in the 80s, if, especially if, you're, if they're our age. The Renault Teddy Bear, always fun. Um, but Sentra had wheels with slots and different things. I mean, yeah, we're going to get into things. I love the old. Dodge Viper tri spoke craziness, mm -hmm. or like you want to get into like the Vector V8, you know, future wheel. I mean, yeah, I yeah. enjoyed that era of people dreaming of the future and what the future could be. And they created crazy cool futuristic wheels. And oddly enough, as well as automotive design, which is finally starting to progress towards the future, um, we've just been so stale. For the yeah. automotive design, wheel design, everything for the past however many years. It's been the same damn thing. You watch the 50s to 60s to 70s to 80s. I mean, things were just dreaming and rockets and all these things were inspiring yeah. what was happening in automotive design. And then right now it's like, do you, do you see the video game with the new car in it? And it's cool, but nothing is changing. I just saw up at Bill's. Were you, weren't you with me, Zach, when we saw that Cadillac, the white Cadillac? After, wasn't we there after the shoot? Oh yeah, went by with white walls. Yeah, yeah. and it was a, like a, a a dude in a, a pearl white Cadillac sedan that had wheels that looked like they were like El Dorado wheels from the fifties, but they were twenties with uh, white walls I on. Like it. I was like, this fucking guy, <laughs> this guy knows what the fuck is up. I like it. I it mean, was I, real cool. I appreciate people dreaming. I guess that's my whole thing, right? Is I. As silly, I like the Chevy SSR. I like the Plymouth Prowler, but not because I enjoy the no, car no, yeah, as much. It's but a, I enjoyed it's that somebody design. was dreaming about yeah. saying, and then some guy pushed the green button mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Fair into point. production. How insane is that, yeah. right? I mean, like I grew up dreaming of things from Mercedes of like, you know, the ML that before that was like this crazy beach cruiser with like crazy tires that had the Mercedes logos and all these beach, you know, tops off and this crazy like. These just these insane concepts. As a kid, I was like, "Oh my gosh, the future is insane!" Yeah. And then we got to like 2002, and the and car looks the same as it does today. Yeah. It's different headlights, some different body lines, but some guy, it's the same crap. So I even even electric cars. As much as, I mean, electric car for me for a daily is the most beautiful thing in the world. But I, I need to have my screamer and my cars. They're just pieces of crap that you know are doing their thing and leaking oil because I just enjoy that side of it. But I do enjoy the future. Of what of the dreams of the future, right? Because we're watching the Jetsons and these sounds and all this crazy stuff. Well, like, electric cars cool. should allow for more unconventional designs, well, right? If you don't sure. have to have a fucking motor in the right. front, but we haven't gotten to that point yet. Well, that's where Mercedes went with the EQS. I think they were trying to do that. Mm -hmm. That's why they didn't do an electric S class, like where Ford just did yeah, yeah. F one fifty Lightning, which right. is fine. But like they went, we need to do something new, like a Prius. Well, you failed. I mean, I don't think it was really anything like. Like make something groundbreaking, like, it's like also, even to if be it's honest, groundbreaking, it's supposed to be exciting. The you new Kia, yeah. like, looks like a Lancia Delta Integrale uh, or whatever Ionic it is. 5, that, yeah. The Ion Five, yeah, so uh, yeah. Ionic Five or whatever it yeah. is. That's cool. I, I'm not a huge fan of the Hyundai one or whatever it is, but like the Hyundai one is the one you're talking oh, about. Sorry, the Kia sorry, is the EV6. That's right, EV6. Yeah. Sorry, I, I don't, but I don't love it, but I love it. You know what I mean? They're they're experimenting. They're having fun, and I I want more of that. I want to see people. Give me some. Can you give me some more like I love it or hate it stuff? Give me some less of this middle road, middle of the road. Well, crap. What's what may be good about EVs is I think there's a lot of things that are middle of the road because everyone has MPG standards, so they go it has to be this slippery. The yeah. hard points are when this. You get, when you get to the well, that's to what the, has influenced the drag coefficient yeah. standards. That's when you really. Sure. So with EVs, they don't have. It's more about range and maybe if we can convince the public they don't need to drive more than 12 miles a day so if the range is 250 or 275 or 232 and everyone just goes okay those are close enough so they can experiment well, more with the design if i can get down here to la and back to ojai 
That's all I really need. Dude, I, what I'm we need are like, we need we need more you know, high speed stations that work more reliably. If that's the, exactly. if that's gonna that'll do it. And I'd I think because that, right now I'd be try, I wouldn't worry about I just worry yeah. about getting here. Yeah, yeah. My car be sitting down there charging. Yeah, I'm not it stressed. could be. Yeah. I have a charger here. Exactly. So I'm not stressed about yeah. it, which would be beautiful. But I don't have yeah that luxury right now because I, sure. I would genuinely I would go buy an e golf right now. Well, if the prices weren't three times what they should be anyway, yeah. used cars, which is why I bought a Maverick. Um, but you know I. I, I, I welcome that as a daily driver, you know? Just don't don't outlaw my crap that I'm having no, fun No, they're not going to you know? outlaw anything. You know, I don't see that happening. You but, can still drive a know. fucking Model T on the road if you yeah. want. No one's outlawing anything. No, I don't think so either. It's not happening. But I, but I would like, that's why the Rivian to me, great gas mileage, fit the family, do all its thing, yeah, long yeah. range. I'm cool. excited to drive that thing. It'll be cool. Yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, these we'll save general, these two yeah. for, the, for the, general, uh, the general show later this week. They are right. not, they are not... Applicable. All right, not applicable. To our guest. Hey. Thanks for coming down. I'm man. in it. Of I course, I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, I Making enjoyed the it. Trek. I very much enjoyed it. Me and my weird beetle talk. You know, it's always <sighs> the fun. You're not going to make me like a beetle, but that's okay. Hey. I still like you. You will. You'll take it on a drive. <laughs> You're going to love it. <laughs> it's going to be good. I want to buy you a flower for the vase. Uh, you you want to plug anything while you're here other than Matt Crook, uh, K C R O O K E on Instagram. <laughs> No. Anything else? Uh, Plug the gram. Hey, my son's birthday was yesterday, so that was exciting. Turned turned two years old. Happy so uh, yeah, it was fantastic. So my loving wife, and uh, yeah, if you uh, if you're looking for some uh, you know some branding work, hit if you me want up. one off sets of wheels for big fucking money, that's right, big mm-hmm. fucking money, just reach out. That's where you go, buddy. Hey, thanks for coming down. That's our show. We got a crew show on uh, when is that tomorrow? It's tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday. We can do Are we that. doing it tomorrow or Thursday? Whatever we want. I don't know. We're doing hey. it in one of those days. Doesn't matter. Uh, whenever we fucking <laughs> feel like it, bro. That's how we roll. Podcasting. It's yes. Brilliant. On your time. On my time. Um, and uh, yeah, go download the Burt Kreischer show. Go download our other shows this week. We appreciate it. See you later. Good night.